Hello and welcome to Velnord Arkelis in Andorra, where we are here now for the third stop of the Freeride World Tour, and it is a banger of a day. It is sunny, there is fresh snow, and we're looking forward to amazing snow that's just about to go down. Welcome from my side as well. It is, as you said, a beautiful day here in Andorra, and we are so excited to have this event going. Uh, a lot have happened during the week, and uh, I think the riders are pretty pretty looking forward to that venue because uh, it's filled in with good snow and uh, they are pumped to ride. That's right. Here with me is Martin McFly Winkler. My name is Neil Willeman. We're here to present this uh, fantastic day to you. Just like Martin was saying, the, the conditions are fantastic and the riders are pumped. They've been waiting all week for the perfect conditions. Seems like we have them now and we're all pretty excited to see it go down. Yeah, we are on a phase that we have been riding before in the past. We've had quite a few events going on on the Baza Negra. Even you were riding on it a few years ago. I remember well your line with a huge air at the bottom. So you have a lot of variations and possibilities of features from freestyle to big mountain. Everything is in there, so it's going to be a pretty exciting day for sure. Yeah, that's right. There's a lot of snow here this year, a whole lot of snow. A lot of the gullies and landings are really filled in, so I think it's going to be a day that we see features sent bigger than before, maybe tricked when they have not been tricked before. I think there might be some new lines today as well that have never been seen because of yeah. the amount of snow we have here today. So that's very exciting. We have some other news as well to update you on a little bit later, but uh, for now we'd like to introduce that we're going to welcome you to Val Nord. Uh, tell you a little bit more about Andorra, uh, where we are. So as you can see, it's a magical place, uh, not just the mountains, but the town, the scenery as well. We've been completely welcomed into the heart of the Pyrenees here in Andorra, where the locals have just made us feel so at home. It's been a, a wonderful experience so far this week. Uh, the locals have been skiing a lot as well. The, the slopes and the piste there are really well prepared, really sunny days and, and some good snow while we've been here too. And what we're really here for is the free ride. You can see it's a free ride maker. It's a free ride paradise here in Velnord Arkelis. And uh, it's been the, the site of some of the most famous runs on the world tour, like this of Sam Smoothie in 2015, where he had the whole venue named after him as Smoothie's Garden now. Also some amazing runs from Leo Slemet and Sammy Lubke last year, who went on to become world tour champions. So obviously a pivotal event here. And not just that, we had Amar Navarro, you can see just now wild carded onto the stop last year, and now a full world tour on uh, the, the whole year round. Yeah, he is. Unfortunately, a little bit injured, Aymar, the local, but he's always good for a surprise, and uh, he has been uh, choosing lines that we have never thought possible on these mountains uh, over the last couple of years when he was a wild card. So he's, he will be on again for sure, even if he has a little tweaked knee. Yeah, that's right. Unfortunately, a little bit of an injury to both him and the this year's wild card, I believe, uh, who is entering in the snowboard category. You yeah, raised uh, Thoma Thomas Rich, the local Andorran freerider. He's actually on the qualifiers at the moment, trying to get on the big stage, and he had a wild card for this. He has a wild card for this event. Unfortunately, this morning he had to tell me that he is a little injured, but we come to that later, and we'll see how he's riding. That's right. And uh, for those of you who may be tuning in for the first time to this exciting event, we've got a little bit more of an explanation about exactly what we're doing, what free riding is, what competitive free riding is, and how we'd like to relate that both in judging and, uh, and the wow factor that we're all here to watch today. What is competitive free riding? Well, after years of having fun, people began to wonder who was best. And so it began. A crew of skiers held a competition in Alaska. Next was Switzerland with the extreme verbia. Gradually, these contests spread across the world and joined together as a single tour. And so it went global. The big show. But in the end, it comes down to one rider atop a mountain. And while safety equipment is abundant, the rules remain remarkably simple. There's a start on a peak and a finish at the bottom. There are no gates, no piste, no clock, and there's no practice run. Riders rely on a visual inspection and their imagination to create a line. Runs are judged using five subjective criteria, which means any approach or style has the potential to win.
For riders, the pressure is immense and the margin between success and failure narrow. Over the years, competition has driven the sport to new heights and now the only certainty is progression. This is competitive free riding. That's right, that is competitive free riding. This is competitive free riding. You can see the finished corral that has already been set up in a matter of minutes by the, the staff here. It's been really amazing to see how quickly these guys have worked. There's been really difficult conditions on mountain for the last few days. Uh, securing the face uh, yesterday and this morning was something that was done really quickly, uh, really efficiently really uh, impressively well actually by these guys they hadn't had much time to get this all done and they have done such a top job so a big up to them that are the unsung heroes i believe of competitive free riding is a huge amount of work that goes into making an yeah. event like this happen so that's part of the reason we're all so excited for today absolutely when we're here at the third stop of the tour and of course uh it has already been there has been already quite some action in japan and canada and uh, what the whole tour is all about that's what we're going to see right now so the winter was meant to begin in Hakuba in Japan, but unfortunately the heavy snowfall there combined with strong winds made it too unsafe to run an event. So the athletes braved it out and moved on to Golden, BC, Canada, where it was time to get rowdy. Two events were staged there in the end, and we managed to get two amazing podiums down. Logan Pahoda's run there, something to really remember, the athletes kicking off the season in style in Canada. Now it's time to hold the line here in Andorra and Valnord Arcalis. There's been some incredible runs go down here in the last few years, and I don't think this year is going to be any exception. You can see some of the tricks, shoots, and huge cliffs by locals and tourists alike before it's crunch time in, Andor in uh, Austria, sorry, in Fieberbrunn. That's going to be the next stop in only a few days where the riders will be looking to get their third result out of four to qualify themselves for the grand finale in Switzerland on the infamous Vector Ross. It's steep, it's gnarly, it's intimidating, and it's where the world champions are going to be crowned. So we've seen what competitive free riding is. We've seen where we've done it and where we're going to be doing it. We've seen what we want to see from the athletes. We've seen some of the impressive things they've already been doing this season and in the last seasons. But how do we judge that, McFly? How do we decide who is the best? What criteria do we use? Um, so the, the criteria we have on our hands are, are always the same, of course, as we have already explained in the competitive free riding clip, um, that it's... Uh, um, that it's quite tricky actually but we have came down to a format over the last few years and i think we're going to see in a minute we're going to see a nice little clip that shows that exact uh scenario we have a judging panel with uh, some very experienced judges on our hands and they are judging on the following criteria. we have line choice of line how difficult how technical is the terrain also, gnarly line scores score well, but creativity comes into play here as well. Fluidity, very important, not uh, about speed, how fast is the rider going down the mountain, but relatively how fluid is he actually going through uh, places which are very technical. Control, everything comes down to crashes or are you in control of your ride? Uh, very important segment, especially if you want to get up to the very top of the podium. Air and style, the most spectacular category of it all everything that happens in the air but also just before and uh, after so landings very important technique the last segment as last category of it all it's about how committed a rider is going down the mountain and it all comes down to an overall score and the judges have a hundred points in total to give away that's right, and it's not an easy job. I do not envy the judges, especially in this new age of uh, both free riding and freestyle being combined in the big mountain scene. There's huge cliffs being thrown out there, and these are the guys that are going to be judging who's doing it the best. Bertie Dernavar, one of the big men of the Freeride World Tour, a longtime competitor, as well as Lolo Best, the other snowboarder on the panel. We have Laurent Gaultier out of Canada and Dion Newport out of New Zealand, both skiers, both big names in the freeride scene. A lot of judging experience here, so it's good to see these guys 
stepping up and uh, making the the best results that we can get out of out of the competitors that are putting the runs down. Like I was saying, it's really difficult for them to separate free ride and freestyle, and the two different new school and traditional versions of free ride is a really difficult thing to separate. So big ups to these guys. They've done a great job so far this season, and I'm sure they'll continue to do that today with the impressive show that we're about to see on here, the Basa Negra, the name of our local face. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I'm pretty sure we're going to see a whole lot of variation, which makes the, the job of the judges even more uh, difficult. And that's the venue that the riders have on their hands to express their riding style. And uh, it has, as we said, a lot of options. Um, it has some steep parts, but also some flatter parts. It's uh, rolling and has some shelves, very uh, playful at times. Um, it's a northeast orientated with uh, a in yeah in in general has a declination of 44 degrees the start up there at two six eight seven meters um the whole mountain region here is pretty high up it's great for for riding you have a ton of different uh, possibilities if you want to go out for a tour here and uh, the finish is just at 2200 so um we have a vertical difference of 470 meters it's pretty spread out. We're going to uh, explain a little more later on, uh, I guess, as well, uh, uh, how far they can go. So there is there is a limit. Not everything to the look has left that you just saw on the image is in the boundary. They have to stay within the cliff band at the bottom. Uh, so you won't see anyone going further to the skiers left and the big cliff band. That's right. There's a few reasons for that. We'll update you about those a little bit more as we get on further in the broadcast. Uh, just to let you know, there has been a variable snow over the last couple of days. We've had variable temperatures, wind, a little bit of precipitation recently. So uh, exactly how the snow conditions are going to be is a little bit to be to be determined by watching the riders. We've seen a couple of forerunners come down. The snow was better than they expected. Really uh, enjoyable, uh, shreddable, stompable snow. So had a little bit of a rain crust just below the face. And I'm really glad to hear that it's not in the face itself. It's really good news. Uh, we've got a little bit more to update you about in terms of the the face itself, what has happened on the face in the last few days, and we've got some pretty important and unfortunately sad information to share with you about that. So I'd like to start that off. Yeah, you may have learned that uh, during preparation of the contest venue on Thursday, two mountain guides were caught in an avalanche, and one of them, a local guide named Borja Ayat, didn't survive his injuries. He was a passionate lover and lover of mountains and sport, and the Freud Walter family really would love to express their deepest sympathy and convalescence to his family and friends and the whole Andorran community. The second guide, a French named Julian Casagrande, sustained a broken leg and recovers in hospital at the moment. We're sending best wishes to you, Casa, and best healing wipes. Just like to, to emphasize that safety really is the number one priority at the Freeride World Tour, and we're working with mountain professionals to bring the risk as close as possible to zero. But unfortunately, we know that there is no such thing as complete zero risk in an alpine environment. Even the best mountain professionals are, are, are they're not immune to the risks. No one can never be caught out. And we're dedicating this event to Borgia. There'll be a tribute to him at the end of the event, including two of his friends riding down the face after the competition. We're not going to televise that. We want to both pay tribute and give respect to the privacy of his family and friends. So the riders will also be wearing black armbands today and Borgia is going to be in our thoughts for a long time. It's a terrible, tragic event that we are unfortunately not immune to. You're right. And uh, every rider has their thoughts and pays tribute to Borgia today. Yeah. So it's, it's been a, a heavy week here uh, on the Free Ride World Tour. It's part of the reason that the competition has happened later in the weather window than it may have otherwise. Uh, we're here to, to celebrate and uh, to put on a good display of free riding, uh, both in Borgia's memory and, and to look forward to better times. Yeah. And the, start, the riders, in fact, are pretty much ready in the start. We're... Uh, about to start the first category, which is the snow moored man. They are already up there, and uh, a lot have happened in this category already in the last two events, and I'm pretty sure that we have some of them that want to have revenge for what happened the last 
few events. David Baird, though, had a very cool start of the season with a win and a very good top uh, top position in the second event, the Hakuba event. Thomas Verstein out of Austria, putting out his traditional signature style uh, riding to put him in a good position too. Jonathan Penfield taking his first win uh, at the Japan Hakuba event staged in Canada. But there are also a lot of other names to look out for. Of course, uh, we have uh, Semi Lipke, the current two-time Freeride World Tour champion in the lineup, and uh, no one else than Gigi Ruf is also here in Andorra to prove that he is one of the best, which he already proved for many, many years on the film scene, but now here he is on the bib number six. That's right. We also have Christopher Grumman has won here before at this stop. And as you were just saying, Thomas Rich, the local wild card, who is unfortunately riding with a little bit of an injury. We've got Clement Bacchetti there, not to forget Blake Ham. Got a really stacked field here today. And I'm looking forward to seeing what they're going to put down on the bus in Negro. Just to let you guys know, we have a five minute delay. We're going to be starting at 9.05. And so to get you psyched for the snowboard men field that we're about to see go down here, we're going to see the best of the snowboard men from Kicking Horse, the last stop we just had in Canada in Golden, BC. event we had on our hands uh, in Kicking Horse Canada. Snow was great. The riders killed it. That here was we time have to get rowdy for yeah. sure. <laughs> and so who have we seen here win before? Um, uh, yeah, last year it was as well pretty tricky with snow conditions, but it turned out really well for the event day. And uh, no one less than uh, Christopher Grumble took the win, and we're going to watch his run right now. That's right. From last That's year, 2017, <laughs> Christopher oh, Grumble. All right, Christopher Grambaum. He actually has a good memory from uh, this, let's say, the start gate. Last year, he came second place on his rookie season uh, here in uh, Val Nord, and it was a pretty similar aspect just yeah. to the skier's right of it we were riding. Uh, and now he's dropping into skier's left side of that Basta Negra face, as the locals named it strong rider that can also put in some freestyle action he's got a few tricks when he wants doesn't he yep he especially spices uh, those cliff drops some grabs usually pretty playful and still big mountain orientated rider coming out of sweden yeah, I was gonna residing say. in uh, verbier switzerland verbier. Going into the Gnar with a lot of rocks there passing by. That fresh snow really did its job to, to cover, put a nice Woo! layer of snow that on was nice. this face. Pr really nice uh, feature there. Very flat landing if you would take it from the top. Very smart to cut he took across it. it. Yes, yeah. you're right. Now in the mini golf section, nice. high well. speed going through there. And probably hitting that lip. Yes. Probably wanted to get some more air underneath his board. But still, really nice choice of terrain. And finishing with a bang. Oh, Christopher Grambob. That's first place for me. It is. Yeah, it's got to be. <laughs> it's got to be. Then again, the judges are just next to us. So they can make me look very stupid. Saying that, I do a good enough job of making myself look stupid, so that's absolutely fine. Now, I'm pretty sure like this was a complete run. Uh, no troubles whatsoever in that one. 
Well, like you said, second place here in 2016. He got seventh here at the first stop just last week. So definitely looking to improve on that, and he'll be happy. Yeah, he smiles on his face. He's kind of giving it a bit of comsy concern. Yeah. He knows he can do better because yeah. he, he has the potential to go big, which he did in his first comp, but then bailed on that one, unfortunately. So now it was time for him to put down a score. As we said before, it's only two scores out of three that count, and he needs a result. Well, Here comes the moment of truth. Let's see what the judges make of it. And you are Easy. right, my friend. Easy, 81, look at that. That so was the winning the run start. from last year from Christopher Granblum. And <laughs> I think that when you see the face today, you're going to see, wow, there is a lot more snow now. Some of those features that were big then, they're not so big now. Some of the features that were impossible then, they're possible now. It's a really exciting day here. It's going to be a pretty big show, I think. We're just looking... Uh, as the heli starts dropping off the riders on the top of the ridge, not too long until we start now. Uh, just before we start, you've still got time to bet on who you think is going to win. Peak performance fun bet is something that you can enter on the freeridewheeltour.com website. And who would you bet on today, McFly? Uh, that's, as always, a super tough one. Um, I shouldn't give my bets away because they're usually pretty spot on. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, joking. It's uh, so hard to predict, uh, especially, of course, in the ski men category. We have so many riders. It's a, a field of 25 riders altogether. Uh, but choose your rider, pick on him or uh, bet on him and uh, cheer for him when he's riding down. Who do you have in, on, uh, on the list? Let's say Ski Man today, the, the easiest. Ski <laughs> Man, wow. It's going to be a tough one, just like for, you were saying. Uh, I think spot. that the guys who have been doing well are going to come in with a lot of confidence. It's a similar type of venue, I think, to what we were riding in Kicking Horse. A little bit longer, but a similar tricky kind of features in the way that there's flat takeoffs that will enable the riders to perform freestyle moves. So uh, I'm thinking people like uh, Leo Slamet, Marcus Eder, Logan Pahoda. Uh, you never know with the the classic traditional style guys like like uh, Rainer Barkeria and uh, Stefan Heusel as well. They are always charging so hard. And whether they're going to overcome the freestyle guys here or not, I'm not exactly yeah. sure. But uh, it's going to be interesting to watch. And I think a little bit more of the freestyle orientated guys might do a little bit better, in my opinion. Uh, yeah. So just to let you know, we are just about to start. We have 30 seconds to the first start. Got helis buzzing around in the background. You might be able to hear them. Thomas Feuerstein is ready in the gate up the top. He's been looking forward to this all week, and so have we. Uh, the nerves that the riders go through on a day like this, they've been uh, getting psyched, they've been studying their lines, they've been paying attention to the changing snow conditions as we see the heli cam start to fly up the face now. Uh, it's just a beautiful day here on the Bassa Negra in Val Nord, Arcalis, Andorra. Pretty excited to see what these guys have got for us. Snowboard men starting first. In 30 seconds, Thomas Feuerstein, he'll be getting ready, strapping in, making sure that his buckles are as tight as they possibly can be, all those heel straps and toe straps, getting the foot into the board as much as possibly can, choosing which cool way he's going to go down here. There's three options at the top. Oh, I'm pretty right. excited about this. <laughs> you can hear that, and uh, for sure you should be. Um, just as much as Thomas Feuerstein, he has fresh tracks. First rider down the mountain, it's all in the sun so perfect conditions it's a uh, pretty firm it's going to be fast we're going to see what thomas feuerstein will make of it the austrian local out of montafon and he's on course oh. nice styly air off the first hit so how is the snow? We're, we're starting to try and figure it out. We've watched the forerunners. We're watching Thomas now. Looks like a bit of soft on firm. You can see, by the way, he doesn't dig into the snow so deeply when he lands. Going pretty fast. The snow isn't slowing him down too much. Grippable and rippable, but maybe not the softest for landing. So we'll see if that affects how big he goes. He's taking it medium size so far. I've seen this guy go so bigger, but far, keeping it styly. And he's getting into a bigger section. The Malakoff Cliff. As you mentioned before, it's not as big as it used to be and not as sketchy because the cov uh, the in the landing, the rocks are pretty covered. So uh, that's he's right. He's Little. making the best of it. He's uh, chipping around as we know him. It's his signature uh, way of riding. Very playful. Putting in some shifties, lining up the bottom feature. 
Uh, getting a little bit back seat in the air, but poking to his feet like a cat. How did he do that? He did, and uh, to be honest with me, I'm very surprised that he didn't do any rotations because he can do them in his sleep. Yeah, a little bit surprising for me as well. Thomas Feuerstein, very styly rider, a little bit of a park background, putting in grabs and 360s usually. Good shifties today, not going as big as we're used to seeing him go. Maybe the snow is a little bit difficult. Maybe the snow is a little bit tricky. As we're saying, when we skied over here, there was a little bit of a rain crust underneath. The forerunners said there wasn't so much on the face, but let's see what the score comes in as. Here we have uh, just an indication of the judging criteria the head judge puts down just an indication to show us uh, where this score could go and thomas stoked to be down good to put another run down on his feet he's already got two good results and he's sitting second overall so we have some uh, replay slow-mos here is second air as you said you can see that it's pretty firm it doesn't dig into the snow a lot here again and probably that took him a little bit off his plan because usually he always has a plan of doing some tricks 84.33 good score for Thomas Feuerstein first out of the gate putting in some solid shifties solid grabs as we said no spins but still a really good score 84 is going to take a bit of beating you are right and uh, I'm pretty sure that the, the riders up there were watching very closely to see what the snow is like Thomas was getting pitting, but here we have in the start gate our next rider, Davy Baird from Homer, Alaska, US of A. That's right, Davy winning the, the first stop, which was the kicking horse, Golden BC stop. He took a really nice long air down the bottom, showing that snowboarders can ride just as fast and just as big as skiers, which is a nice reminder. Oh yeah, he has everything that you need for a freeride world tour rider. He can go big mountain and also freestyle and jibbery. So, uh, and the first guy getting the compulsory shoot off the start gate today. Ooh, taking a little bit of a buck check on that landing, unfortunately. Reverting, coming back from switch to regular. I think that'll hurt his score a little bit. Much more technical section than Thomas. But that loss of control on the landing will hurt his score, I think. You're right, like uh, he's trying to make up for it with uh, choosing or with uh, hitting every feature he can find on his way down. Here he gets into a section he has been riding before last year with a nice approach from that lip. Stomping it clean. Very clean, you're right. You saw him coming past a literal bomb hole on the way down before. Just like to explain that that was from heli bombing to secure the face this morning. Here he comes into the bottom section of his run. A little bit of a hesitation. It, it seems he's not fully, aw not aware, but uh, maybe a little lost. Yeah, that section of the face is really blind, but putting in a 360 and stomping it so smoothly. And a nice mute to finish things off. That's a good run. That is going to be difficult for the judges to compare, I think. More technical top section, compulsory air out of the chute that comes straight downhill from the start gate. A little bit of a loss of control landing that first air. Puts in a three where Thomas didn't. It's going to be tough. I wouldn't want to oh be a yeah. judge right now. It definitely comes all to uh, how much deduction he gets from uh, that little uh, control issue in his landing off the top section, as you mentioned perfectly. He has done it all. Tricks at the bottom, very technical and uh, big mountain style at the, at the top. And he still used all the features in the middle, so uh, that's right. You can would see have been a real good, a perfect down. run, actually. For, yeah, uh, for if him. he stomped that top air, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So that's I think we'll see a reasonable score. Here we have the replay, that top section with a mandatory air, pretty big and a tough landing. He has to revert out. For me personally, it wasn't that major of a, the butt check and then he had to, he had to have some seconds to regain full control. It does play a role. A little bit of slough in the landing. I wonder if it's hard or soft. I thought it would be soft, but it looked like it might be hard. 64 points for Davy Beard. That loss of control on the top air landing, hurting a score. I think that we'll see a few riders come in between Thomas Feuerstein and Davy Beard as well. So sitting second for now, but I think that he'll be lucky to make the podium today. Uh, we never know what's going to happen. Uh, other riders might have trouble with the same landing. I think we'll see a lot of people riding that same shoot. And the next one on course to maybe ski that same shoot 
defending World Tour champion Sammy Lukey. On course. And as usual, especially now that he's back into shape, he had an injury on his knee on the first two events where he was just cruising down in his terms. And uh, now I think he's back in uh, more or less full form. And you can see that perfectly with a super nice tweaked. Euro method, as the Americans call it. <laughs> yeah, it's great to see Sammy back on form. Uh, like you're saying, riding a little bit below his optimum potential in the first two competitions, still getting some reasonable results. But now, stomping airs like that and a little bit more of a full send mode, I love to see the way he slashes power as well. Getting pitted, claiming it a little bit there and coming into the more technical section. I think the section is really blind, and that's why both Thomas and Davey were a little bit hesitant coming into it. But nice indie there from Sammy. And going onto the lip, I'm pretty sure. Will he take some air? He does. Beautiful backside three. And just ollieing on three, out of sorry. <laughs> Wow, really nice run from Sammy here. Another air down the bottom, keeping it smooth cool control it doesn't look like this guy ever has any worries no he looks so solid and comfortable with what he does he's always in control he makes it look playful puts in a tweak in the air into that technical section and then perfect usage of terrain beautiful That's lip right. actually a very similar line with, because we just saw uh, Christopher Grambaum uh, line from last year and the bottom yep. section was just the same and but with a beautiful 360 at the end. All green lines on the judging criteria. I think this is going to rival the first score of Thomas Feuerstein. Yeah, I'm going to call it out. I think we're going to have a new leader from, from here on. Sitting in the hot seat for now, Thomas Feuerstein. How long is he going to be there? 90.33 for Sammy Lubke. Huge score. First place for now. Knocking Thomas Feuerstein out of the hot seat. He's back on form. He's back here. He's back to win. First win of the season. After two reasonable results in the first two competitions, I think overall that's going to put him in a really good standing. You're right. And here we are already back on top for another rider that has something to say. And he is up for redemption because he had a really bad start of uh, the com contest season. It's Clément Bochate in the starting gate with two crashes in the first two events. Very unfortunate. We have seen him riding in the off days and it's very impressive the confidence he has in big mountain and freestyle terrain. Really talented rider, Clement. Really good to see him on tour. He's fought hard to be here. It's difficult how sometimes you can end up in a funny mind game about how is my snowboarding doing when I've had two bad competition results. It doesn't change how good you are, but it changes your mental strength, which is a really important thing. So these are the three top guys, the three first competitors that he's going to be looking to, to beat to get on the podium. Sammy Lubke is just like we just said, 90 points. It's a really tough one to beat. Uh, and then we've got Davey Beard on 64. So to get on the podium for now, he needs to be on at least 64 points. He's made his way over to the drop, and the judging will not start until this moment when he's on the face, and let's see what he's got for us. Yeah, he's opening up a new zone. We haven't seen anyone ride in there, except the forerunner, in fact. Snow looked a little chalky, a little wind affected, I would say, and there has been a little bit of a, a surface slide going off, but he managed well. Nice top here. This section of the face on the looker's right gets a little bit more sun. It's a little bit more south facing than the looker's left of the face. So I wonder if there's a little bit more of a, a sun crust underneath that. Uh, it's difficult to tell from here. He's riding really well though, stomping those ears so far. Yeah, he has to stay on his feet. He knows that. I'm pretty sure he has that in the back of his head. Yeah, not putting any grabs in yet or real shifties like the other riders were doing. I think you're right that in the back of his head, he just wants to make sure he stomps, make sure he stays on his feet, get a run down and give himself a good chance to qualify for the finals. Bottom section of his run. Very similar section with the little double. We've seen already three riders on the same uh, section at the bottom. It must be pretty 
That's right. Popular section, but stomping it and surfing it, that was a little bit faster, I think, than some of the other riders we've seen come through there. Not as many grabs or shifties as the first three riders, but solid, confident, stomping, a little bit more traditional free ride big mountain style. So I think the judges are going to like this. They're going to like it, but I don't think he has a chance to uh, challenge the first two riders because uh, they had tricks and... Uh, not, no, actually, <laughs> Thomas didn't have any tricks, but I think he hit more, more fluid the airs. Um, but uh, as we see, line fluidity is not very high. So Maybe a that's an indication that the, the top, score cannot fluidity. jump into the very excellent range. Good control, though. So I think I'd yep. agree with you that it's probably going to be sitting between uh, Thomas Furstein and Davy Beard for now. Uh, maybe, maybe above Thomas, but uh, there's a big point range between the 64 and the 84. So there you go, 69. Clement sitting in third for now. Podium potential. We're almost halfway through the field, so good for him to put a run down. I think that'll be good for his mental confidence. Still needs another good result before the next competition in Verbier. And back to the start, we have the American Blake Ham, the rookie from. Uh, Solitude Mountain Resort, US of A. Yeah, I was riding with Blake the last couple of days. There's been a, a few down days where we uh, got to ride both some good snow and some, uh, and some rain. Uh, and I was really impressed with Blake's ability to land sideways when he was uh, not just snowboard sideways, but uh, he'd throw a three, land it with his board sideways and just sort of ride it out like it was nothing. So a bit of a ninja, a bit of a cat, and he's on course. He is, and he could be one of the dark horses of the tour this year with uh, coming as a rookie. He showed that he has some strong riding underneath his feet, and uh, that's how he starts off this run here in Andorra as well. That's right, the same top here as a couple of the riders. Putting in a nice grab there too. Following the tracks of Mist Forstein, the Austrian. Now it's splitting up. He's getting into uh, Samuel Lipke's line. Stomping everything so far. Very fluid, smooth. Lots of little airs, but stomping all of them, looking to give the nice. I think the fluidity will be good here. Maybe the line score not quite as high as some of the others. You're right. Now it comes all to the bottom section, and he's opening up a new zone to the skiers left, riders left of the venue. You can see no track so far. This is the blindest part of the venue too. Coming into this is over a bench onto a rolly convex section. So really difficult to see exactly where you're going. You want to make sure you get your takeoff right. You don't want to be landing on rocks. And on top of that, as you mentioned before, the exposition is completely different. The angle of the slope is more south facing. And that means it has a lot of sun and warmth in it. Stomping that, after banging in and claiming, he's happy to be down on his feet. He's done well today. I think the snow is a little bit tricky. I think it might be a little bit variable and different in different places on the face. Uh, but Blake making good work of it, putting in a method there. Going for the tail touch grab, stomping even though it didn't look that steep. Yeah, really nice run from Blake there. Where would you fit that into the rankings? Yeah. That's going to be a tough one. Um, it's, I think he's going to battle it out with uh, Thomas Feuerstein, to be honest with you. It could be just above or just below. That's my, my take on it. Definitely a very complete run from top to bottom. He, as you said, a great usage of terrain. He didn't miss any features. It, uh, he linked them all together very fluidly. Yeah, exactly. Good fluidity, good control. No tricks, though. Yeah, but we didn't see Thomas Feuerstein. Usually, we, there, it's a, it's a no-brainer uh, no that we have Thomas with a trick, but this time he uh, opted out of it. And Blake coming in with 74.67, sitting third for now, so just behind Thomas. Back to the top, who we got next in the gate. It's a big name. It is a famous snowboarder. It is a legend of the sport. It is Gigi Roof. If you hadn't heard of this guy, well, I guess you should have, but if you haven't, then look him up. He has been putting out the most banger backcountry freestyle snowboard sections for the last five or even ten years. <laughs> even further along. His first video part was in 1999, Destroyer by Kingpin Productions. Imagine, he is in the game for close to 20 years. Two decades he was shaping 
and influencing the backcountry slope uh, slope style, the backcountry freestyle scene on the snowboarder side. That's right. Really honored to have him here. Really glad to be hosting him. Hasn't done super well in the last two events. Uh, looking forward to seeing what he's got for us today. I'll be interested to see if he goes for the more free ride style central cool that we saw Davy Baird go for, or the lookers left cool wild with a nice uh, jibby top hit, maybe a, a spin off that. Uh, famous for being able to put spins in places where other people haven't, so uh, I'm excited to see if he uh, pulls that off today. Yeah, if you can sum up uh, his riding in one word, I would choose creativity to the max. It's unbelievable the way he uh, looks at a mountain is just so different to anyone else probably on the planet. And uh, a lot of big names in the sport are looking up to Gigi Ruf and uh, watch what he's doing. That's right. We had a few uh, people that were unwell in, uh, in Canada and in Golden BC. And uh, I wonder if uh, he was one of them, but then this time he, uh, he said, no, I'm not unwell. Uh, if I ride badly, just say I'm old. <laughs> yeah. I don't think he rides like he's old, though, man. No. I've been riding around with him the last couple of days, and I think that he's uh, popping about twice as high as most of the others. So if that's old legs, then I want them to. And if you think it's just a piece of cake for him to ride down on the Free Road World Tour, uh, you might be mistaken because uh, he really takes it serious. He wants to show the best riding. Unfortunately, on the first two events, he couldn't. Uh, he had two unfortunate things. One, a little pocket slide he was not aware of that was next to him, so it uh, took him off balance. And in the first event, he caught a little rock underneath, hiding underneath the snow. We call them sharks. And uh, unfortunately, he had it was sent he was sent into a tumble and so both of the scores of the first two events were pretty low for a gigi roof standard yeah that's right still uh, doing some nice freestyle moves down the bottom in a second round. i really enjoyed that not letting the the fall earlier in the run upset his style and he's got style to burn he's got lots of it and he's so eager to show the best riding and the terrain to be honest is made for him i I'm just so looking forward to see his run now. That's right. Playful freestyle terrain, especially this year with the filled in landings. Uh, flat takeoffs, I think they were a little bit sharky recently, but now they're looking good. I'm excited to see what Gigi's got for us, and he is dropping in on course. I hope this little interruption didn't put him off concentration. But as soon as he's uh, out of the gate, I'm very sure that's his natural state. <laughs> oh, don't Pretty get hung fast up on that out of there. <laughs> Yep, carving it down. Taking a lot of speed into this next hit. Yeah, that's why. Tweaking out a nice method. Whether you grab in front or behind your bindings makes a difference, whether it's a Euro method or a regular method. Here's a Euro, but I think you grabbed regular method just then. Getting into a different section now. Have we seen anyone hit that yet today? Uh, yeah, it was Davy Bird. That's uh, right. Same section there. A very good friend they were of, uh, of Gigi. They were traveling quite a bit over the last few months. Do you think Gigi's style might have influenced Davies? Looks a little bit similar. I can imagine they were talking about lines. He's not hitching, hitting that many features. A little backside three on the way down to a more technical, very playful looking section for him. That's yeah, right. He Tweaking out another <laughs> method to a really surfy, fast line down through there. Ollieing up the side of the groomer track as well. Coming into the finish line switch, buttering around. I wonder if he's happy with that line. It seemed like he was a little bit disappointed coming out of it almost. I'm not sure. He was really fast through that bottom section. As we're saying, it's really blind, really difficult to come into a section like that with confidence when you can't see exactly what's yeah. below you and what's coming up at you. Uh, I wonder if he either didn't find the feature that he wanted to or got on top of it, realized that he wasn't where he wanted to be and just pointed it through with those slashy mm -hmm. power turns. Uh, I think that he'll get a decent score, but it might struggle to get him on the podium. You're right. I would say... It at least this this drop here was the highlight of his run. Stomp it the too. 360, nice, but we know that he can go way, way bigger than that. And I would say even he was a little reserved on what he is actually able to do. And uh, here we have his score, 80 points. Sitting in third for now. So currently on the podium with his friend Thomas Feuerstein, Sabi Lubke, defending world champion in first. But I just want to add, 
very understanding to be a little reserved if you ha when you had two crashes already in the first two events. Now he wanted to put down a solid score, which he just did. We are back up to the start, and next rider in the starting gate is the Swede, Christopher Granboom. Yeah, so out of Sweden, Christopher Granboom on course, defending his title here. You're right. And Val Nord Achilles. Usually, uh, the, the Val Nord events are pretty good to him. He, he feels well here. He had a second place and a first place finish already. Going for a big yeah. mandatory air and actually, I don't know, it was a little hand drag, but I don't think a butt check. It missed that landing a little bit. We're going to see it in the replay later on for sure. A little bit zoomed out. He hit quite hard. Whether any part of his body touched the ground other than a snowball, I'm not exactly sure. But a little bit of a better landing than Davy Beard. And Davy Beard Ooh, is a solid going rider. Big. So, oh. He misjudged that direction completely. It was very similar to his uh, previous year line but uh, a little bit further to the skier's right of it, and unfortunately it sent him into the rocks. Glad he didn't land on the rocks there. Yeah. Uh, putting a little mute, and then off the next air, unfortunately front punching, riding out, but two losses of control in that line. It's gonna hurt his score. Not his day, but to be honest with you, the line choice, if you put it down, that would have been the winning run, I can tell you that. I think it's very similar to Davy Baird, both going for very ambitious lines, that uh, compulsory cool wire at the top with the, the mandatory air out. Gran is disappointed. Here is top air where everything still was going to plan. And you can call that a stomp for sure. So Definitely landing. the best top section, but then this happened. Did he clip that rock on the way through? It's seemed to me definitely he got out of balance probably wanted to avoid it with his board to get it out of the way and just managed to get into the snowy part yeah i think he might have just tapped those rocks on the way to his landing as well which doesn't help sticking it straight on your feet unfortunately the control right down under judging criteria so i think we'd be looking at a sub 50 score uh, unfortunately yeah. that would not put him even close to the podium which is what he's used to having here in Andorra. i think both on the world tour and the qualifiers that's how close you are from uh, the top top scorer winning an event, which in my eyes, if he would have stuck all of those landings, he would have made the win, or at least the top, uh, top scorer for now, because he was combining a big mountain section at the top and doing the freestyle, just as uh, we've seen the current leader, Sammy Lipke, who is in the hot seat right now. That's right, so 34 points for Christopher Granboom. And we're back up to the top now for the next rider. We've got two riders left. This rider is Thomas Rich, the local wildcard out of Ordino Achilles. Uh, we're here at Val Nord Achilles. Ordino is the town at the bottom. That's where we're staying in Hotel Coma. They've been incredibly welcoming and generous to us. So Thomas Rich about to be on course. The guy who said he's tweaked his leg, his knee. Yeah, he was riding with all of us uh, just a couple of days ago and uh, he after the day, he felt there was something wrong in his uh, left, wait a second, his back leg. What is he riding? <laughs> yeah. So his right leg, he had a pulled muscle. And the doctor said, oh, that's not very good. You might be able to ride, but uh, probably it's going to hurt. And uh, he said he's not sure what he's gonna, how he's going to feel like when he's riding. But maybe he can blend it out, and he's going to show a, a really good run. If not, we know what, why. <laughs> That's right. Well, getting into some nah at the top of the looker's right chute, the same area that Clement went to, but taking it into the chute, coming out hot too. Hot? Doesn't look like he's riding that carefully for someone with an injured leg. You're right. That's the proof. Stomping too. <laughs> that was a little bit bigger, I think. Same hit as Clement, but taking it deeper? Deeper, maybe he, he had to wiggle his arms quite a lot to, to get back into full control, but uh, he is on a roll linking up those features and he's sending them. That's right, tough call whether to ride on the World Tour or not when you've been given a wild card and you're a little bit injured, but it looks like he's really pushing through it. He is, it's his local terrain. He knows it by heart for sure. He's also on the qualifiers trying to get on the big stage. That's his first shot at it and he's going big! Oh. Unfortunately too big to stomp that landing. Wow, big double though. Huge <laughs> double, wow. I'm glad that he tumbled through snow instead of rocks at the bottom there. I think he had that lined up so his direction was correct. He knew that if he fell, he wouldn't fall into rocks, but 
big run there from the local. Oh yeah, look at the speed at the very top section. Came out hot, as you said, and here it's already the double. Sending it big and unfortunately out of control. So we call that front punching. If the front of your board or skis goes down into the snow and you tumble over frontwards, that means you're going for the stomp. It means that you're aiming to put it straight to your feet and absorb all the impact. If you're not trying to do that, then you usually wash out, butt check on the snowboard or back slap on skis, but he was going for it. He was aiming for the stomp there. For sure, and it was a big crash. Luckily, as you said, all through snow. It didn't hit any rocks, but it was that hard that actually the, the avalanche backpack released. It's opened up and you can see his uh, uninflated airbag flapping around a little bit. That won't be too difficult to repack, but no. getting a lot of appreciation from the locals and he deserves it. What a run for an injured guy. I think Sammy Lubke is safe in the hot seat for now though. So Thomas Rich coming in at 39. Uh, Thomas and Granboom, I think, propping up the table, uh, unfortunately for such amazing runs. But just like you were saying before, that's the margin in competitions like this. Yeah, if you want to go for the win, you have to give it all. And that's usually when it gets tricky. And if you have a fall, then of course you get deducted. So we've got Jonathan Penfield in the gate right now. Last rider on course out of USA current winner from this season he's high up in the overall ranking right now that's right current first place after winning the hakuba staged in the golden bc stop that we just had last and getting into the most technical section we've only seen two riders go here one of them stomped it one of them didn't one of them crashed later in their line so if jonathan can Ooh. stomp it like that and put down the rest of a run i think we're going to be looking at a really impressive score you are right he's uh probably at the highest score currently. Putting in a mute off that second hit as well and getting into the Ivan Malikov cliff. And, oh, going for the stomp on that one too, but front punching that snow must be a little bit variable in there. You're right. Luckily again, he didn't hit any rocks on the way down, but unfortunate that would have been such an amazing run with that 360 in the middle. Oh man, he must be gutted. He knows what he just left behind. Yeah, big ear off the top, backside 360 in the middle, getting to the Ivan Malikov cliff. I don't know if you've seen that guy send it, but wow. It's an impressive run, stomping really hard apart from that one front punch, which means he was really going for the two feet, hit the bolts on the stomp, putting in another grab. That bottom feature is very popular. Yeah, I think it's a little bit hard as well. A little bit flat, maybe. <laughs> uh, we've seen a couple of riders come unstuck, and unfortunately, Jonathan also having a little bit of a washout on that last section. But that's section. definitely the highlight. The mandatory air out of the top couloir. Wow, that's impressive. And here where things went wrong, again, front punch, double, wheeled out. Oh, no. Maybe a little bit better to take speed off that air. Nice three down the bottom, but uh, hard to take enough speed into that Maiva Melikov cliff because it's so blind. It's Jonathan Penfield having a crash today. I don't think it's going to hurt his chances of making the finals. Was sitting first before today. Maybe not after this. I think Sammy Lubke will be sitting in a good place to look at overtaking him. We'll see how the scores come in at the end of the day, but impressive riding from the guy's snowboard field. I think Sammy Lubke is going to take the win. I think Thomas Verstein is going to be second, and I think that we're yep. going to have a new third place as well. Yeah, there's no doubt if you have a crash like that that you, you there's no chance that you can... Uh, score that high to uh, to pop off a, or to to put off a, a line like Sammy or Thomas off the podium so 53 with a crash it means they loved his run uh, he's still going to be down near the bottom of the table but it's uh, encouraging to see that the only guy to stop the stomp the top cliff like that hard uh, ground as well but uh, both having crashes later on the run unfortunately so Overall results, Sammy Lubke taking the win. He's back on form. Thomas Firstein and Gigi Ruff, the Austrians, completing the podium. Uh, we saw the Americans finishing mid-pack. Unfortunately, Thomas Rich, the local wildcard, crashing out. Christopher Grimbaum also crashing out, not able to repeat his win from last year. A little bit of a topsy-turvy table there. It is, and you're going to see the overall ranking, the current overall ranking, is going to be mixed up from what we had last time we looked at it because we had some of them 
who were at the bottom now winning and vice versa, just like Davy Baird who had a crash today and was in first place uh, for now. He was overtaken now by Thomas Feuerstein with 6,380 points. That's right, Davy Baird and Sammy Lubke rounding out the current top three. So Austria and America on top right now. And if you had a quick look, you saw that the first five, I think, riders are just within 1,500 points, which is not a lot. That's right, Jonathan Penfield slipping from first to fifth just from today, so it's tight up there. Cool work, that was already a great category. Next up, we are gonna have the snowboard women. And the ones to look out for today are Wakamahama, the surprise, the uh, wild card of the season, and uh, she proved that she deserves that. Anna Olova coming off the qualifying series last year and putting down some solid runs, sitting second overall already after two. And Marion Erti, the defending world champion, sitting in third. She'll be looking to improve on that today. She's not used to not being in the top spot. You're right. It was a highlight of her run, although she had a little issue, control issue before, but we saw the first 360 stomp from a snowboard woman. And uh, let's see if we see another one from her. She can do it. She is ready. So first out of the gate, we've got Erica Vikander coming off a podium finish in the Hakuba Staged and Golden BC Canada event. We've got Shannon Yates, a fellow American, Wakana Hana, currently leading the Tour Mandel Mandel, coming off a win at the first stop of this year. Audrey Herbert, the freestyler out of Canada, some impressive front flips from her last year, Anna Olova. Wow, it's a really stacked field here. And Marriott Hati, the defending World Tour champion, out of the gate last today. Oh, I'm looking forward to some impressive riding from these girls. Yeah, it's going to be highlights until the end of that category with Marion Her Herty dropping last. So the mental game is so important here. The people that are good at snowboarding, which is all of them, are coming into the stop, some with good results under their belt and some not. It's crazy how one good result can make you feel like you're amazing and one bad result can make you feel like you suck. I can't explain that enough that uh, it's as much a mental game and a confidence game as it is a skill game. And your ability to, to believe in yourself, your ability to say, I'm riding well, I'm going to stomp today, can make just as much of a difference as your skill, as your line scoping, as everything else. The mental game is so important. And I think that Erica Vikander probably has a bit of a stronger mental game coming off a second place in the last stop, the Hakuba staged in Golden BC Canada. And now she's on course, taking the lookers left cool why the same as a lot of the snowboard guys did with that really fun looking jibby feature coming into the top of the course and i'm excited to see what she's got for us here today yeah snow is pretty tricky it's not very soft and fast so you have to control your speed all the way down first air for erica yeah, I think the snow's fun. It's rippable, it's grippable. The forerunners looked like they had a great time as well as all the snowboarder men. But I'm not sure if it's the easiest to stomp in. When Laurent Gautier, one of the judges and one of today's forerunners came down, he said, yeah, I think if you land hard, you can punch through. And I think that's what happened to some of the snowboard guys going on a front punch on some of the airs. So Erica Vikander definitely wanted to stay on her feet here today. Enjoying that pow, coming through the chute. She's already got an air under her belt. She's lining up another one, stomping that too. Surfy power turns there. It looks like a lot of fun. Just like to clarify that in the last event, I said that Erica didn't like snowboarding or Japan and generally anything fun. And uh, <laughs> not sure if everyone understood that I was being sarcastic to go <laughs> along with her sarcastic sense of humor, which I very much appreciate. So Erica doesn't hate everything fun. She's a great snowboarder. You can see her ripping down the face today, taking another couple of airs and lining up another one at the bottom, stomping that too. I think it's a good run here, McFly. She is. Um I have to say, though, I was uh, seeing her riding on the free days, on the shred days, and uh, she was uh, opening up the throttle way more. It, it seems that she's a little bit more reserved, I can imagine. It's a competition, um, and she wants to, yeah, she wants to have a good run down. down but I'm very sure that we have some more potential in this girl for the future. Yeah, well, I think that now she has a couple of decent results. I think she might have crashed in the first competition. So that's two runs on her feet, smooth flowing with good airs out of three. And it gives her the chance to set herself up. She set herself a well platform yep. 
with uh, getting one more result in Fieberbron at the next stop in a few days, hopefully, which will put it into the finals. And that's the aim of the game. That's the goal for the world title is to at least be in Verbier. So fluidity a little bit down there. As you said, a little bit hesitant. Uh, I think she'll still do all right overall. And 65, not bad at all, first out of the gate. Absolutely, it sets the bar for the women's snowboard category. Her inspiration is uh, one of the riding side, Marie-Francois. The Whistler-based uh, ripper. And we are back to the start with the veteran in the start gate, Shannon Yates from US of A. Former Freeride World Tour champion, and she won all the big events that are on tour, including Verbier Extreme. That's right. I think second overall last year, also hailing out of America, the same as Erica. So we've got the two American riders front in the field today, coming out of the gate first, both heading to the looker's left. Uh, the looker's left is a little bit more open. It's a bit more flowy, playful terrain. Uh, I wonder if we'll see any of the snowboard women hit the central core today, because that would be super impressive. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, but I'm pretty sure with the snow conditions we have on our hands, it's going to be tight and hard. We have already some tracks in there, so I'm pretty sure we won't see any of those happening today. That's right. As we said, staying on your feet, showing control is a really important part of the judging criteria. If you crash, you pretty much can't podium. Not, a, not an absolute rule, but... Uh, yeah, I'd say pretty much. Uh, Shannon making sure she stays in control here, taking a creative little side hit into a little shooty pocket there, uh, making the most of the fresh snow, finding places that people haven't gone before. That's important to make it easier to land. Coming in smoothly, but a little bit hesitantly to this bottom section. As we said, it's really rolly ovary, and really convex, really blind. You're right. Here you have to find the right spot for your turns to not get caught up on rocks or grassy parts. Will she hit that bottom air? Get it, Shannon. She is. Nice. Yeah, it's a pretty technical section down the bottom. You can see there's a couple of rocks and, and bits of grass poking through there, but she manages to navigate her way through those. Stay on her feet, surf that power at the bottom. Nice run there from the not defending World Tour champion, but second last year and previous World Tour champion. Solid run. How do you think that's going to compare to her fellow USA compatriot? Um, I think they're going to be pretty close together. Um, I think she hit some more features, but uh, there was some hesitation as well, including in that run. Um, so I would put, I would see them pretty you know, on a similar score. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit more technical, got into a little steeper zones, but a little bit less flowy, a little bit more hesitation. So uh, as I was saying, tough job for the judges today. Uh, Lolo Bess, uh, we've got uh, Laurent Gauthier, new on the panel, uh, Bertie Danevart and uh, Dion Newport. So really experienced panel of judges. They'll uh, assess that, say that the fluidity is a little bit low. The Erin's style was a little bit low, especially compared to Erica. But her uh, line was, uh, I thought, pretty good. The control was solid. Technique was good. So it sounds like she's probably going to come in a little under Erica. I'm not really sure on that. You can tell me my voice getting really high there that I <laughs> don't really back myself in <laughs> we'll see what the judges say. Shannon is a girl that just loves to be outside. Second place with 60.67. That's right. The intensive care unit nurse hang, hailing out of Snowbird, Utah. And here we go. Next rider in start is the wild card from Japan, Wakanahama. She surprised us all, I must say. She was a complete... Uh, yeah, it was, she was unknown to me, that, and uh, I don't follow border cross that well, but if I would, I would have uh, recognized her. She was on the border cross scene for quite some years, and now changed into free ride snowboarding, which she, she has done, of course, in the land of POW for years in her backyard and now on the big stage at the Freeride World Tour. That's right, and first women snowboarder to hit that top air feature that a lot of the guys were hitting, so immediately out of the gate, that's bumping up her score. You're right, she's not afraid from taking the features that are coming her way. And as we've seen in the first event where she surprised us so much, she showed us a 180 
and then a cat 180 just after on the, another cliff. So that was uh, right, and she did a bit of switch riding in between as well. Yeah. It made it look pretty smooth. I think I heard someone say, is, is she riding switch? And <laughs> yeah, she was. I didn't know that was something that you learned so well in border cross, but <laughs> yeah. well done, Wakanda. She's got some stomp legs on her as well, sending ears and really putting them to feet, not looking like she's going to put a hand down or a butt down. Really solid snowboarder, and it's impressive. She's a pretty small person and really and nailing those ears in Canada, which wasn't the softest. It was good snow, but I wouldn't call it Japal. So, yeah, really impressive riding out of the experienced veteran border cross. Here we have her in the middle section, going for another air, stomping it clean. That's right. You can see the way that the head bangs. It's a it's a cool thing to do, but it's also a, a result of landing flat, landing heavy, and like absorbing the impact with your upper body. It means your legs must be really strong. They're taking the impact. They're not letting, letting your upper body go down on any part of your body touch the ground other than your snowboard. But yeah, it means she's she's stomping these landings. She's going yeah. for the full stomp. More of danger at front punching than of butt checking. And doing a double as well. Very nice work at the bottom here for Vakanahama. She keeps up the momentum. And uh, yeah, she just uh, surprises me again because it's a way longer face. Uh, it's uh, it's rolling a lot. It's not easy to uh, to uh, scope, and uh, she's choosing her line well, sticking to it. Feels in her comfort zone. Yeah, just so solid. And uh, she knows how to put down a good score. And I'm pretty sure we have a new leader here. Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, it was just like technical and stomped uh, can't really take anything away from that at all uh, the double that she did as well i think they really bump up her score i'm not sure if everybody knows what a double is so i'll just explain it here you can see that she didn't make any turns between those two cliffs so it means that the first one you have to land perfectly to line up for the second one uh, it's two features in a row it's not a double flip as some people get confused when we're talking about it when people are scoping it's a double drop or a double cliff and she stomped that made it look easy uh, I think that her control was one of her best features there because she was just so on it the whole time. She never looked like she was going to fall. Uh, a little bit slow, maybe a little bit hesitant, and it uh, looks like the judges might have, have penalized her for that. But I think that overall, she'll be looking at a good score. I would say, say the same, yeah. Of course, it's a long face. As I said, it's rolling a lot, so she had to get into... Okay. So 56.67, only coming in a third at the moment for Wakanahama. I wonder if the judges feel like she had a control issue near the top. I uh, didn't see any personally, but uh, uh, some of the landings maybe could have been taken as uh, uh, being a little bit slow or hesitant. I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know, too. Um, Sitting on the podium for now, and I was impressed with the run. Yeah. Here we go, next rider who had an amazing start into the season with a win, her first win on the Freeride World Tour, fighting on the qualifiers for just uh, for a couple of seasons, and uh, she's back strong and showed an amazing run in Kicking Horse Mountain Resort, Manuela Mandel, on course. That's right, and going to look as left Kulwa so far. I think that all the snowboard women have taken that option to this point, but Manu Mandel and Wakanahama, the only two to hit this top air. I think Manu taking it a little bit more slowly, but still really solid. Like we're saying, it'll bump up her score straight out of the gate and pointing it out of there so fast. She is not waiting for anything. She's heading to the right to the next feature and getting it. Yeah, wow. Manu. That was a big air. Yeah, that was uh, the same as Jonathan Penfield, I believe. Lacing it through that chute there. Manu really sold right. Unfortunately, having a problem with her eye during the down days. She was running with an eye patch when at one point she thought the competition might be the next day and she had to get used to it because she was having a problem with the, the visionary contacts. But stomping all of these stomps so far. Very strong run. That's what the judges want to see. No hesitation and going for some decent airs. Yeah, quite fast too, especially that top section coming off that first hit. She didn't slow down at all, didn't try to slow down. She just looked comfortable at speed. That's really important. Coming to this bottom, surfy, rolly section. Going for another air at the very bottom there. She does. Nice. Nice work, Manuela. Was that another guy snowboarder track that she was following there? Could be. Wow, that's really impressive, super solid run from Manu. I think she was really disappointed with her last run at the Hakuba Japan stage in Golden King Horse BC. Uh, so way to follow up on that, hitting the same air as Jonathan Penfield and stomp legs. Oh yeah, she will be pleased with that. 
Yeah, well done, Mona. Fighting away onto the World Tour for two years in a row through the qualifiers. And all those lines are green. I think she is going to be a happy Jackie today, permitting herself a smile. She's a oh, very disciplined yeah. rider, and she uh, is rewarding herself today for all the hard work she's put in. Well done, Manuel Mandel. Erika Vikander, nervous moments in the hot seat there. I think that her time may have come. I think she knows so as well. Yeah. Here we have Manuela with 78 points, our new current leader. Getting into the hot seat for the next few riders to come. Three still at the top. But it's going to be tough for the other ones uh, to score better because this was a complete run, top to bottom, fast, fluid, taking big airs, very confident. Really solid. Really impressed with that. There's three riders left to go, so I think that Mona's got a pretty strong chance of a podium finish today. She was sitting first after the first event because she won. And now we have Audrey Herbert on course. Audrey Herbert, or Herbert as you want to call her. I think she's from uh, the Franco-Canadian part. That's right, but she's been living in Fernie, I believe, for a few years now. Considers Is considered a local there, for sure. And opening up her run solidly with the air on top, connecting another one right there. Enjoying that power in the middle section. As you can probably see, this top is pretty steep. The middle section is a bit flatter, and then it makes it a bit harder because you're rolling into this uh, convex area in the middle where you have to be confident coming in at speed to, to be sure you've found your line correctly. And then it rolls over again. You're into all these blind features, stomps that one, flattens out again. In your mind, you're, yeah, I've done it so far. I've, uh, I'm on point. I'm on my line. Just find my next feature. Uh, you're not quite... Oh, there you go. A little grab as well. You're not quite celebrating yet, but in your mind, you know, everything's going well. Freestyle backcountry uh, background from Audrey. I like what I'm seeing. It's way more confident and, uh, yeah, going forward. Seems like she's so much more motivated. Of course, she had, uh, there was an issue. <laughs> with an accident of her boyfriend, and luckily he's okay, but uh, she couldn't come to the first venue in uh, Japan. I'm pretty sure it threw her out of concentration, out of focus on tour, for the tour. And now it seems she is back and confident. That's right, maybe just riding in a better mindset now. Nice sunny day, predictable snow, even if it's not the deepest. I think it's gonna be a good run from Audrey. Uh, I think it could challenge the podium. As you can see, dropping into the steeper section, taking some airs a little bit further than the other bomb holes you saw there, going for the method on that hit. Yeah, pretty solid. The judges liked it too. Uh, control is high, technique is high. If uh, Manu hadn't just put down such an amazing run, I think they could even be looking at the top spot. Oh yeah, like um, the way the, the indication looks like she Probably will not push uh, Manuela off the top spot, but uh, it's going to be a solid score for sure. Compodium, compodium, podium potential. <laughs> compodium. Compodium. Here we said second place currently Audrey and with a solid score. Well, with only one rider to go, I believe. No, two riders to go, so it does not guarantee a podium. Two solid riders as well. Anna Olova and Marian Erti, uh, second and third overall, respectively. So I wouldn't count your chickens yet. <laughs> no, definitely not. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Manuela can already say that she is on the podium with currently first position and two riders to go. Up in the Stargate, we have the Russian Anna Orlova. Coming from the free ride world qualifiers, strong riding for years, and now she has a chance to play with in the big league. That's right, she's been fighting super hard to get onto the world tour. She really deserves it. I'm happy to see her here, sitting second overall right now. Coming down the steeper section at the top, the look is left cool as we've seen the rest of the snowboard woman get into as well. Not hitting that first feature that we saw some of the other girls hit, so I think uh, she's going to have to do some work to, to get up into the podium from this point. But lining up a bigger feature here and stomping that, so actually a pretty good way to start the run. 
sometimes I think you can get too focused on on something like that. She had that bigger feature there than most of the other girls did in the top section. So she could have probably hit the top feature too and that middle feature, but it's hard to focus on more than one thing when you're you're in the zone at the top of the run. She's got two features under her belt already though, stomping both of those, lining up the same little uh, Kuwa shoot that we saw some of the other snowboard girls lace it through too. Getting a little bit tracked out there now, so maybe that's why she was a little bit more hesitant into there. The more people that have skied it, the faster it is in there and the bumpier the run out is, but no problem for Anna all over so far. Solid air in the middle section. That will bump up her score now. She's not as fast as you said. Going down the mountain, just as we have seen Audrey Heber and Manuela Mandel with full speed and confidence. She's not pushing her score on the fluidity side but let's see what she has for us on the bottom set at the bottom section that's right the heli cam footage from behind her just before i think was a really good uh, perspective of how blind it is coming into this section unfortunately um, but checking that landing though not taking quite enough speed or the right angle like we said it's so blind down the bottom there putting another run to her feet though Another drop to her feet, sorry. Overall, the run had a control issue in it. And there's been a bit of a tight margin between the girls today. So I think that could actually hurt her score. It could have been a podium line before that. But with that butt check, I think she will probably not be looking at a top three spot right now. Uh, it might mean that she drops from her second overall. But uh, yeah, as you can see, the control quite far down, a little bit too slow and butt checking out off that. Uh, starting to look a little bit sun affected in the landing as well. What do you think? You're right, there are, there are definitely some parts, and especially that that feature at the bottom where she uh, took it from the side, uh, was mm -hmm. it, it's turning into the sun, and uh, we have quite a bright sunny day, which uh, we're happy to have, but of course it also has an effect on the snow. That's right, so Manu smiling a wave. I think she knows that she's probably going to keep the hot seat for now with only one rider to go. Anna Olova, 46.67, that's sixth place, and unfortunately I think that's last. So, Marianne Erdi in the gate, and who's she got to beat? Manu, Audrey, and Erika. Uh, 70s down to 60s. What do you think about her chances of overtaking those top three? There is pr quite a big gap between Manuela Mandel and Erika Vikanda. So there is a good chance. And uh, it's it's Mario Herti we're talking about. So uh, Manuela Mandel definitely is not in a comfy position. S uh, still, she can get kicked off that hot seat from the current third World Tour champion, Mario Herti, as she wakes, makes her way over to a little further skiers or riders left side of the mountain that's right so the first snowboard girl to go to the lookers right Kuwa, not the central one with the compulsory out of it but the same one as clement uh, bocati and uh, uh thomas rich went to so uh i think that straight out of the gate going somewhere else uh, compared to the rest of your field it's it's gonna bump up your score as long as you do it creatively fluidly and just let you know the judging does not begin until you get into the face she's still on the other side of the ridge right now uh, she's not going to be judged for fluidity or control for walking uphill or taking a foot out of the binding until she gets into the face from about right meow. Mario Herti on course. Into a very steep section. That's right, Fluid gearing riding. into it too. Yeah. Very technical area right there. Snow is not the best, especially for shutting down speed. It's fast, not very soft. She's heading all the way to the riders left of it, finding some fresh tracks. Beautiful air there, stomping it. Yeah, a little, little bit, bit of wild. an issue. <laughs> but Hand down, but not too bad. I think so far this is definitely the most technical line. She's got into a steeper area that she aired into, got into a bigger cliff that she, and another one stomping that too. A little bit wild in the air with a hand down in the middle air, but I don't think that's gonna hurt her score too much. And very important that you don't lose a lot of speed going to your next feature. Straight forward to the bottom section. No wiggling about. <laughs> That's right, keeping the fluidity up. A little bit of hesitation here. Trying ah. to make sure she gets to the right feature. You can kind of feel the points ticking away. It's about one point deduction per second. And wheeling out with a oh, butt check, yeah, unfortunately, yeah, on that it, one. Was it a butt check? No, I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not it sure. May have but been. definitely it was a control issue, unfortunately, not sticking as clean as we've seen from riders before or from her previous cliffs. 
here we have that top section which impressed us a lot because it was the only girl going there with an air into that couloir. It's steep up there. Oh, nice heli cam shot. Big does it justice. Look how gnarly it is up there. Big air in the middle. Unfortunately, the very bottom air, she was a little bit out of control. So I'm pretty sure there is no chance for kicking off Manuela Mandel from the hot seat. And she knows that. Nice run though. Good to see a smile on her face. Sitting third overall before that run. It's been tight today in the women's snowboarding. I think you really had to put down something pretty solid to get on the podium. So I don't think she will have with that control issue. I think that Manu Mandel is safe to take a second win for the season. It all looks like it. Looking up at the face, wondering what might have been. It's crazy how different the feeling is now to when you're in the start gate. Manu with a cheeky <laughs> little smile. Hello, that's me. Disappointed after her last run, stoked after her first run. I think she might be taking two wins home out of three. I think that would probably put her in the top spot overall. And Marianotti gets on the podium. There you go. Three thirds for Marion. Well done. The judges must have loved that steep technical top section. Well done, Marion. So Manu Mandel, 78 points, winning overall. Audrey Ebea second. I think it's her first podium for the season. Maria Erti, third podium in a row. That might be the top spot for her overall then. Erika Vikander Shannon has also solid runs. Wakana Hama and, oh, and Lova, uh, unfortunately, going down. Manu celebrating, getting some props. And will that put her in first overall? Yes, it does, by a bit as well. 300 points above Marian Erti, the defending World Tour champion. So Manu Mandel, two wins and a crash, putting her first place overall. Marian Erti, second, Wakana Hama still top three overall. Erika Vikanda and Anna all over fourth overall. Audrey and Shannon rounding out the full table. So the next field, after two impressive snowboarding fields, is the Ski Woman. We're going to see a recap of them right now. The women to look out for, Ariana Tricomi, with a win in uh, the Hakuba restaged in, uh, uh, in Canada. Eva Wagner with a first win in the first event this year. She had a season where she was not very happy from last year, but now she's back in form. And who else do we have here in Andorra fighting for the tour, not only tour, but also the competition for today? Lorraine Huber opening up with Eva Wagner, the Austrian fellow in second, Ariana Tricomi in third, and so on. We have We have seven riders. Finishing up with Rachel Croft at the very end, and in the uh, in between we have Hazel Birnbaum, Elizabeth Gerritsen, and Kylie Sivell finishing up the start list of today's ski women. Again, it's going to be very tough for the judges. Will we see some freestyle flowy runs versus some big mountain version ones? Unfortunately, we don't have Jackie Paso on the start list today. She injured herself while filming in, in Austria for her new production, new movie with Elva Valkner and cannot be with us. Some healing wives to you, Jackie, at home. I'm pretty sure you're going to watch us and uh, your husband, Mr. Stomptown, Rainy Barkeret, coming up later on in the program. That's right. Big love and healing vibes to you, Jackie Paso. Uh, we've got uh, Lorraine Huber in the start gate right now. Eva Walkner, the film compatriot of Jackie, is second. But right now, Lorraine Huber on course. She was not too happy with the first two events. She misjudged on the uh, uh, takeoff on the first and has some redemption to do. She knows she's strong to charging. show her riding and she's charging. Really fast out of the top section, taking the same top hit as some of the snowboard girls and some of the snowboard guys, but really fast out of that next section. So keeping her fluidity up really well, just needs to find the next feature really quickly 
to show her composed line choice. This is where your mental game comes strong, your line choice is so important, and airing straight, no hesitation into that top section. Really smooth fluid riding so far, McFly. Absolutely. You could say that she missed a few features that could have been hit, uh, but of course she made it up with riding strong and fast. As you said, to her middle feature, which was a very nice one. And now already the fast riding pays off. She's already at the do bottom section. Stomp legs. Great combination there. Getting very fluid into that drop. And she's out already. That was a fast run from Lorraine Huber. As we were saying before, if you see the upper body moving on the landing and not the legs, it means that your legs have absorbed all the impact. But it was an impact. She hit hard. She took the impact, really showing her strong legs. She uh, works out pretty hard in the off-season, I believe. And watch this one. Boom. Great work, Lorraine. Especially the middle part. You could see how fluent she went into that technical section where she had the air. She was very confident, and she said, awesome. Yeah, she's stoked. Really good to see her put a good run down. Talked to her on the chairlift the other day, and 70 points. That's first for now. We'll see how long she stays in the hot seat. Could be one run, could be all day. But yeah, she was saying her mental game is coming back after winning last year and dealing with the expectations of uh, everyone expecting her to win again, uh, or at least her and her friends. And uh, yeah, it's cool to see her doing a good run today. Here we have next rider up, Eva Wagner from Austria. The veteran and two times free at World Tour champion about to drop in next. Eva, like you're saying, she has won. She's used to being on the podium. Really solid rider. I think that one of her strongest uh, areas is picking good lines. So I'm excited to see what she's found today. She skied this venue before and she's getting into the compulsory shoot area. I'm really excited to see this. Oh yeah. Here we go, Eva. Hitting it big and going strong. Oh, yes, what a great beginning of a run. Stompy mix, stomp face. She proved me wrong. I was not expecting that from the women's category today. It's a gnarly ear, and so is this. Just so strong, stomping that as well. Eva Walkner, I think so far that's got to be a pretty high scoring run. Oh, yeah, she's on a tear. She's feeling good, probably also from filming for her new movie. She did a lot of riding this year, as we have a great season on our hands in the Alps. A lot of snow. A lot of big ears, as we're used to seeing from her. Taking that one a little bit more hesitantly, like we're saying, it's the blind section, it's harder to line up, making sure she gets her other features in. Ooh. See, but holding on <laughs> well done i think it's the most unaffected landing now i think it must be getting a, a little bit harder under there maybe she landed on someone else's bomb hole as well but that's a real show of strength oh, she is pumped. Yes. so pumped she is you can see it in body language and well deserved look at that ear a little bit whoa all over the place with the hands but it didn't disturb her at all she stomped that landing from yeah, the mandatory if... air it's such a difficult thing to do especially mind wise exactly when you were saying you're not sure if any girls will hit that today and she did three really solid stomps up the top i wonder if that love you. yeah big love to jackie paso from eva yeah i wonder if the three solid stomps at the top were taking her leg strength and that's why she was a little bit back seat on the last one and whether the the harder snow or maybe sun affected snow affected that too but yeah i think it's going to be rivaling lorraine's run both top class world tour riders Defending world champion versus previous world champion. And she does take the lead with 78 points. Eva Valkner, super solid run. Really impressive riding. Your Austrian compatriot on the top of the podium for now, McFly. Oh, yeah. We've already seen two amazing runs from the two girls down the mountain. We still have five riders to go that can still challenge both of them. But what a performance we've seen already. So back to the top now for Ariana Tricomi. I think Ariana's winning overall at the moment, I believe. I, I think she is. Ariana Tricomi in the start gate. She is hot for winning a title. She was so close already two years in a row. And she has what it takes, especially the playful riding the judges and the audience loves, which she hopefully shows again, combined with some big mountain style, just like this. Popping off that first hit. Always dynamic, 
always a pleasure to watch. And now hitting this next ear that Anna Orlova hit as well. And that's exactly what I was saying. If you combine those two features, I think she's the first person to hit both of them. And uh, when no one else has done something and it's in the same area that you're skiing and you do it, that's so good for your score. You're right. She knows how to build up a score and have fun at the same time. It is fun to f uh, link up features. Of course, Lorraine had a little different approach at the very top, but then went straight to a great air in the middle. And Ariana here links up beautifully all the features that she that comes her way up oh, thought there will be a little grab in there <laughs> yeah i think the the takeoffs are maybe a little bit different to how people are expecting but going solid big. air in the middle oh yeah ari and you had that on your mind the oh yes big yes! 360 from she ari. does it Woo! oh yeah and the pre-claim do it girl <laughs> yeah what a run so well deserved. Oh, we talked so much about it. You have to do the 360. She can do it. She's proven it in films and riding uh, without competition so many times. Yeah, Ari. She and can't it believe happened. it. Look at those judging criteria. Oh my gosh. The whole crowd is going wild here. And it was a big one. Oh, we were calling her out about going a little bit small in that top feature in the middle and guess she had something else on her mind going massive and then throwing a big three. She's <laughs> stoked and why wouldn't you be? You deserve that. Boom. Stuck it so <laughs> clean. The claim still, right afterwards. Still riding out through rocks, but just, nah, there's nothing. I've already done all the hard stuff. And that run was definitely dedicated to... Borja Ayed, we're all riding for him, and he will be so proud of that one. That's right. 90.67 for Ari Tricomi, dedicating that to Borja. Black armband, smiles, beautiful day. It's a celebration here. Oh, so well deserved. She, she was can't thinking believe it. about that trick and doing in competition for so long. <laughs> I even talked her into it, thinking about it, in, to do it in... Uh, in her first event in Hakuba. Unfortunately, we couldn't ride that venue, and she was like, ah, oh, damn it, fly, I should have done it. I would have done it. And I'm so happy to see that she finally went for the 360, well deserved. But next ride in the Stargate, Hazel Birnbaum. I love What can we see Hazel. after what we just seen from Mariana? Well, she's going somewhere else. Oh, Hazel Verma, I'm so solid. I just keep thinking about her run in Verbier a couple of years ago. Uh, she's got some big names and big scores to beat here, though. Ari in the 90s, Eva and Lorraine in the 70s. I wouldn't be surprised if she could post something up there. First uh, skier girl to go over the side, I believe. You're right. We thought we saw Marion Hertie as the only snowbus woman uh, head over into the skier's left, and now she's heading into the Gnar. The Gnar? Going nice big, top here. Controlling her speed in the steep, cooler section there. Same as Thomas Rich, I believe, but coming out hot and so solid. This is my favorite part about her riding. She hits features, comes out fast, and doesn't even look like she wants to slow it down. Going far lookers right now, far skiers left. I think she's opening this area of the face, opening mean, meaning the first person to ski there. That's a, a forerunner's track, I believe, or a guide. S I think a snowboard. Uh, who was it? Or well, maybe not that far, you're right. <laughs> that must have been a guide. Yeah, she's going over to the more sun-affected part of the face. I think it's still good at the moment, though. Just get in the uh, get into the hot pow kind of territory. It's not yet slushy. A lot of exposure underneath her. That's why she has to take some time. Is this the George Rodney line? I think it is. Would have been to the left, but here she is doing a beautiful variation of it. That's right, Dublin down to the skier's right rather than going to the skier's left and the George Rodney cliff out. That would have been crazy if she got over to that section. <laughs> Completely. <laughs> so fast run from Hazel there. As we know her, big mountain orientated, that double beautifully executed, well in control, very creative. You can see there was no line in there and it's, she's still going. Taking another air down the bottom and pointing it, stomping it. Really solid run. They're linking a lot of features together, but it's going to be so tough for the judges to compare those. Going four line versus traversing, 
What do you think? She's found lots of features, but uh, fluidity may be down. Yeah, that's the thing. My, my take on it as a judge, I was always saying, if it's worth going over to, uh, like traversing, to head over to a feature, if it's worth it, then you don't get deducted as much. But uh, of course, if it's just to hit a little feature, which it wasn't, I think it was a really good good line choice on the far skier's left. Yeah, her line score is super high. The girl from uh, Sweet Spokes, I believe, she bikes around dispensing ice blocks. It's her, it's her business when she's not a skier. She is the Sweet Spokes Pops girl, and she is third right now. 73 points, really good line score, a little bit down on the fluidity, but looking at a podium finish. Unfortunately, kicking off Lorraine Huber from the podium currently. But what a level we have from the ski women today. I'm enjoying what I'm seeing. That's right. I want to see three girls in the hot seat because the level's been so high today. You all deserve to be there. <laughs> what else is coming? Here we have Elizabeth Gerritsen in the start gate from Switzerland, Verbier local. And if you grew up in Verbier riding, you know how to deal with such terrain. That's right, she's a playful rider as well, hitting that same top here as a lot of the snowboard guys and some of the snowboard girls did. Uh, putting a little bit of a shifty into it. Also lining up the second ear, the same as Ari. So quite a similar run to Ari so far, but uh, if you wants to do a big cliff and throw a big 360 down the bottom, that could, you know, get her into first place. But hitting Jonathan Penfield's ear and taking it deep and stomping it. Oh, oh my yes. gosh. We have another great run over on our hands, I tell you that. Yeah. Side hitting off that, stopping it too, finding the transition. The transition is the right angle landing for your takeoff, and that's exactly what you're doing during your line scoping. Stomping that one too, finding the right transition on that one as well. The line scoping is what enables you to keep your fluidity up because you know what's coming next, and it looks like Elizabeth's done that really well. Coming into the blind section now, so hard to not be hesitant coming into here. Where's my feature? Where's my feature? There it is. Oh, everyone else went slow off it. Why did they do that? I'll take a different angle and I'll stomp it. Little bit back seat, but I don't think it's going to hurt her score too much. Side hitting off the bottom here. Well, I think her top section was stronger than her bottom section there, McFly. It was, it was. And uh, it was a solid run. It's going to be a good score. But as we had already four amazing lines thrown down, it's going to be tough even for a strong score to end up at the very top. Judges so, like it though, all looking green. This air definitely was her highlight. Blind, straight, no hesitation, and super well executed. Stomping. I'm so happy what I see from the ski girls, and uh, they're all riding for Borja. Borja. You can see they, they must be completely inspired because it's, till now, for me, one of the best ski women competitions I'm seeing. Yeah, this is this is incredible. This is a whole new level. When I saw Eva Valkner get into that compulsory shoot, I was like, wow, she's going hard today. But it turns out she wasn't even enough for first place on another day, I think it would be. So yeah, really, really high level today. Picking podium? I'm really, oh yes, yeah, she is with uh, 75 points in third place. Nice work, Elizabeth. Kicking off Hazel Birnbaum. Also with a great score and a great run. But not troubling Ari Kishikomi in the hot seat. Like I was saying, I think that hitting those two features in the steep section at the top, showing that you're, you're confident is uh, super good for your score. And I'm actually even imagining that the girls hear the cheers at the bottom the, when you are in the start gate and you hear everyone's pushing it. And, and it seems that they are just even more motivated to ski strong. I hope it's the same thing for Kylie Sivell, that she hears how much the other ladies are pushing and she's inspired. We have next right in the start gate, Kylie Sivell out of Canada, Red Mountain, on course. Look as left shoot, lining up the same drop at the top. Cleaning it. Will she find a way over to that same feature? Very solid rider with a background in moguls. You can see that, especially in the air and landing, always f going for the four-point land. That's right, and Ari and Elizabeth both hitting that and both on the podium so far. Getting the Jonathan Pinfield there. Stomping that one too, looking really solid, looking pretty relaxed. She was, with a little tweak in the air. 
Yeah. Little twist. Little shifty, shifty, shimmy. <laughs> Yeah, solid riding from, from Kylie, podiuming in her local native Canada, looking for another one to put her in a good overall top spot. Really fast, actually, into this blind section. Connecting the dots, As building up her score. Footage coming into that bottom hit. And that's where she scored a lot of points last year on her run. And it actually, it is a very popular uh, cliff right now. We have seen a lot of snowboarders and skiers going off that same cliff as she hit last year and she does it again a little more hesitant than last year unfortunately definitely not the plan yeah i think she's kind of skipped a feature there and uh that middle feature i think that she got a little bit backseat on the landing of i think it's not as nice as it looks we've seen a few people hit it no one's really made it look easy it's a blind flat takeoff that's a little bit side hill and the landing looks a little bit bombed out and sun affected uh the same i'd say for kylie that her top section was stronger than her bottom section she looks almost a little bit disappointed and because it's been such a high level today i think that control issue might take her down off the top three spots you are right it is a solid run uh, and uh, but as we have such a high level today unbelievable what we have seen already from the girls previously so unfortunately um, the score will be okay good but not for a good ranking today and it's all about ranking it's not about the score itself here we have 52 points in currently sixth place so that's sixth out of currently six that have run so that's last right now and if that run is sitting last that is such a marker of how high the level of women skiing is today last rider up in the gate we have Rachel Croft from years of a Crystal Mountain is it Crystal Mountain that's right it is guess you call it Crystal if you're a cool local like Rachel is <laughs> so Rachel Croft qualifying last year winning four star comps by straight lining entire venues she was going so fast in such gnarly areas that she didn't even need to take any ears taking her ear out of the gate this time getting her skis off the ground pointing the whole venue in Canada as well at the Hakuba stop restaged in Golden yeah. BC that was insane taking the same top two ears as some of the other top ski girls not quite as big maybe on that second one stopping it yeah. smoothly though fluidly changing our game plan a little bit and the connecting features which is definitely well noticed by the judges and appreciated that's Another something one. that no one's done and that's the great thing here with the venue in Andorra. You Dublin have down. so many options, so many features to hit. Yeah, she's making light work of this. Pretty blind in here, as we were saying. It looks like it's continuous snow. You can just keep riding, but I'm telling you, from the top, it looks like a huge cliff. A little bit hesitant in this section. She'll need to pull off something pretty special. And she's going for it. Boom. Here into that very steep bottom section shutting down her speed and connecting it one. to another feature that's so good for your score that says i'm confident i'm fluid i'm in control i can change my speed with my good technique to adjust for the next thing that i need to hit that that's a really good sign i think that might be up there i don't really want to call it it's so high today here we have the bottom section fluent in parts but unfortunately it was not as fluent as we have seen from other riders as we mentioned already before the level is so high today that uh you need an exceptional run to actually get onto to the podium today and it was a good run but for me to be honest it was not a podium run today i think that on another day it could have been a podium run though this You're is just right. such a high level of skiing here 65 points for rachel croft i think that little bit of hesitation probably really hurt her there uh usually on another day just because of the features that she hit it would have been a great score a great ranking but for now it's only enough for six but i'm very sure still she's going to be happy with her run linking a lot of features combining using the terrain that's what the judges want to see in the future from rachel croft as well so ari taking the win today eva in second elizabeth gerritsen in third hazel, hazel burnbaum in fourth the sweet spokes pops and here we have ariana the winner i just have to say she made history today the first 360 stomped in a freeride ski women competition on the freeride world tour 
Wow, that's impressive, and she's going to be so pleased. And so how's she going to be doing overall? <laughs> she has Current already the golden bib. So keeps the golden bib. <laughs> she will keep it, and she has a lead on her, hand, on her hands. 7,200 points just in front of Eva Wagner. Hazel Birnbaum in third, Elizabeth Gerritsen in fourth, and Jackie Paso in fifth, even though she didn't compete today. That's so impressive. And then it gets pretty stacked at the bottom. Still, for every woman, it's the chance to qualify for next season. That's right. Tighten the points there. Straight into the recap of the scheme men. These La guys have been sending all season. The last category of the day. And we know it's not going to be unspectacular. <laughs> Unfortunately, Ivan Malakov would be the one to look out for because he's currently in number one overall ranking. But unfortunately, he hurt himself on a jump in uh, Canada, BC, and cannot be with us. Ivan, come back next year and ride strong. Logan Bahoda out of Canada, the local favorite taking the win. And Marcus Eder was a huge bottom three in the first event. It's been really impressive riding from these guys today. And then the top three overall, the ones to beat. Here we have, but not only the two that we've just seen, we have another more than 20 riders that are competing for that. Not only the title, but this event uh, title here in Andorra. I'm a crazy run last year. Christopher, massive cliff the year before. Felix Weimer's podium the year before that. Griffin, Craig, uh, we've got some great rookies here. Marcus sitting at the top of the pack as well. Ty Suki, George goes huge. Mikael Bumos is back on the tour. Connor Pelton has also taken the top five here. Uh, I'm freaking out. We haven't even started. Yeah, Logan Pejota from Canada currently in top position, which we don't have uh, even starting here. Rainer, of course, Mayo Stormtown. Fabio, it's, I think, his day today. Ryan Fay, Lloyd Colombo. Baton, always good for a top position, and then Sam Lee, the Ibex, Berkeley, Peterson, the rookie, Leo Slemet, Trace Cook, and then ja Jan Rosis, the Swiss, and finishing off with Stefan Heusel and the veteran, Drew Tapke. Even Malakov and Karl Regnier not starting today, both out due to injury, unfortunately. Also, a small injury to, I believe, Ayman Navarro and Berkeley Patterson. They are riding, but I think they're a little bit below par. Not below par, they're incredible riders that is not at a full 100%. But like we saw in the snowboarding, with the wildcard putting down an amazing run while injured, I think we can still see something special from those guys today. Aymar's run last year was incredible. Oh, yeah. That was, for me, definitely the highlight of last year's competition. A cliff that no one ever even looked at it, and he made it look so easy and spectacular. A big ear with a sniper landing into a shoot. It was in both our highlight reels of uh, Welcome to Andorra and the five stops. I'm not sure if you should have probably put it in uh, competitive free riding as well. It's one of the craziest things I've seen for a while. Ayman Navarro also filming with the Snowmads crew with Fabian Lynch. Fabian said he's one of his favorite ski buddies who looks at the mountain the same way, and... I don't know if you've seen Fabian Lynch ski before, but if uh, if you have, then uh, he thinks that Imar skis the same way as him, then it's a pretty big compliment. Here we have in the gate Aymar Navarro, the local from the Pyrenees. And he's a star here. You can see that he's recognized on the slope by a lot of locals and the local community. That's right. So last year, putting down an incredible run to win, I believe, two years before that getting injured pretty badly on this face i wonder if that is in his head right now i wonder if he's standing at the top of the face thinking last time i was here i skied a crazy line and i came out crazy injured yeah it's part of the sport it's an unfortunate part of the sport how do you deal with that mentally and unfortunately we have to mention that again he had a tweaked knee just coming into that week of event and for him it was actually he was happy not to have the event on the first day because he uh, is still recovering i saw him sitting in the aisle with a uh, ice pack on his knee for the last days and uh, i hope that it's not bothering him too much that's right well someone else that has been sending or some other people that have been sending while we warmed up while we waited for the weather window to come right was the wolf pack if you haven't heard of those it's some of our american riders that are over here to show their stuff we filmed a little edit while we were waiting for the weather and snow to come right and we'd like to show that to you now
So yeah. that is the wolf pack. They always are good fun to hang around with. That's right. They ski hard. They party hardy. Uh, we almost uh, got stuck at the bottom of the road with them today. It was actually a pretty icy drive up, and we had to exchange cars and chains to make sure they got here in time. Yeah. But we are... And uh, unfortunately, we already mentioned it before, we have uh, not the current leader, Ivan Malakov from Russia. Uh, I'm very sure he's watching us today. He's one of the biggest fans of the sport. He just loves free riding and he has to come back next year on tour. Unfortunately, on the run of his life with a first and a third, third uh, unbelievable start of the season. Unfortunately, he got injured on a free ride day in Canada and uh, Best healings to you, Ivan. You have to be coming strong back That's here right. on tour. Mad Malikov, big love. That's right, Ivan Malikov sending it this season. He's absolutely on fire. Unfortunately, we're going to have to wait until next season to see some more action from him. We do have another Russian rider onto it, Anna Olova. Great run from her today as well. But while we were skiing around, waiting for this competition to happen here, Anna was riding good, lots of other people riding good, and I had the pleasure of a riding around with them with the GoPro, showing what it's like on a typical down day for the riders when the snow's good, the weather's not so good, but we're still out there having fun, and we're really excited to show that to you as well. On our way up the mountain, Belnod Akalis, go show you guys what it's like for riders on a typical down day. So much fun to shred around the riders on a down day with good pow. We got picked up by the guides when we did a road lap, some of the local ski patrol, and they said, do you like it here in uh, Andorra, Akalis, Alaska? <laughs> <laughs> really enjoyed that. Akalis, Alaska. That's right. It so is a super fun place to hang around. I must say, like, every rider is stoked to come here prior, and then it's just blown away. When you talk to the rookies, they're like, we heard so much about Andorra, and it's, ever, it's even... Uh, getting further to our, ex what do you call it? Expectations. Expectations. Yeah. And uh, not only here in Andorra has been great, the highlights from Hakuba staged in Kicking Horse Golden BC in Canada uh, was some pretty fantastic riding to watch as well. We had two events almost back to back there. We're going to have two events almost back to back here as we get to Fibra in the next couple of days. The riders are still putting on incredible shows even though they're traveling so quickly to get between the events and really excited to show that to you as, as well, guys. The footage has been amazing today. What a show from the guys in Huckabee Valley restaged in Golden Kicking Horse BC. We've got another show just about to come up, just about to come at you. The local Ayman Navarro making the Pyrenees his home mountain, wild carded onto the event, putting down such an amazing one that wild carded onto the entire tour. 
and he's on course. Uh, well known from the series South Lines with his good friend Milan, and he's no surprise getting into the NAR with a mandatory air. Sending it deep and stomping it too. You don't see any hesitation from him, never in his riding. He just goes for it. He knows where he's going, he knows what he's doing, and he's going big. It's pretty impressive riding for a guy with a tweaked knee. Can hear the crowd cheering here. Like you say, he's a local hero, local celebrity. They're so stoked for him to be back on this face, on the bus in Negra. Devoting this run to his, his friend Borja. Coming into the bottom section, and usually he is finishing super strong. And again, going for, of course, a new line. I would oh. have been surprised if he follows tracks. That's very seldom. I'm nervous and excited. Sendung! Nice. Stompies. I'm out of Varro. Take a bow. Preclaim oh. the crap out of that. Yeah, buddy. So much tension for him and uh, pretty nervous, I'm very sure, because he also had to put down a score. He had some two silly mistakes in the first two events he has to score well to keep his uh, hopes alive for the tour and he delivered and the spanish rider the local wild card devoting the line to borgia his friend our guide super solid run for the first round of the day i would not believe you if you told me he had a tweak knee right now no you d can't see it he, he blended it out completely and look, he's kissing his knee. It held. Oh, yeah. I'm so happy for Aymara. It's, I was so gutted to see him with that ice pack sitting in the aisle, you know, because I knew he was so happy to be here performing on, in front of his home crowd. And he is in need for a good score. And he delivered. I'm so happy for Aymara. That's right. I am too. The Spanish rider that's made Andorra and the Pyrenees his home skis out of the local resorts here. But next rider in Stargate, we have Christopher Tourdel. And uh, he is, in my eyes, he's the favorite for, one of the favorites for the overall tour ranking and probably favorite for every tour stop to win. So solid, and airing into that chute, shutting it down, speeding it up and stomping it. I think it was such a technical entrance to that chute, even more impressive than Imar for me. Absolutely. He oh! goes big with the back oh, yes! <laughs> <laughs> that was so late. Sticking laid out. it. Going big. Oh, yeah, that's. Oh, How does he look so I'm relaxed? Speechless. I'm just speechless. He always puts on a show and he makes it look so easy. So easy. He never looks like he's trying. That back foot was huge. I think he went past everyone else's bomb hole. <laughs> yeah, dude, and it's flat. Right. He took it to the flat. And, and he's not finished. Like he's not finished on a tiny shelf. Sick double opens it up. And going for another trick, a 360, nice. sticking it. Nice, Christopher. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, nice. You thought he's going for your cliff. <laughs> I thought he was. I thought he was, man. But what a run. That was incredible stuff there. That backflip absolutely blew my mind. And the technical entrance to that yeah. top section. Everything was in there. A 360 backflip and that technical section, that entry, as he said, to keep the speed down because the mandatory air is coming and the snow is not easy to control your speed almost maxes out all of the judging categories when you land in a steep technical shoot like that at the top and immediately have to do tight little turns to line up your next feature i mean i must dope for them even though he's probably knocked him off the top spot um i hope the judges are not shy on putting up a huge score because it's the second rider out of 23 still to come Stomps it so clean. Christopher Turdell, the most understated, softly spoken, heavy hitting big name out there. <laughs> it's incredible. I'm speechless. Every time, it's such a pleasure to see him ride. And his his biggest problem is that he makes it look too easy. That's right. That's that's his biggest problem. 88 points. You deserve that, Christopher. Take a seat in the hot seat. <laughs> yeah. I wonder how long it's going to be hot for, because that was a pretty solid run. Going to take some beating there. 
Yeah, when you're saying he makes it look so easy. Felix Wiemers out of Germany. World Tour veteran, he's been here for a few years, and I think that it was 2015 when he podiumed here. You're right. Valnor or Alcalis in the Andorra usually is a good venue for him. He uh, scored some amazing runs, usually showing his uh, signature backflip. As you've seen course. last year in the middle section of the venue, he's also going into the Nar, heading into it from the skier's right side into the mandatory air and S taking speed. Pointing it, a little bit of a back slap or a yes. little back seat. His left ski, uh, right ski was up by going to the signature backflip and stomping this Boom. crap out of it. <laughs> Sending that one deep oh. too, wow. I just thought he had a little crash, but actually just shut down speed. There yeah. was so much smoke in the air to get that Malakov air in, into his line. So very similar run to Christopher Turdell, a little bit of a less technical top section, maybe a bigger backflip, maybe went a little bit bigger on the next hit as well. And this is the same hit that he podiumed with last time he was here, shifting it out, putting it down solidly, really strong legs there. This guy trains hard. Same bottom air as well. Wow, very similar to Christopher Turdell. A little bit of a control issue on the top hit, though, and yeah. no 360 at the bottom. Unfortunately, it took him quite a while. Here we see he goes big, lands, and gets backseat. Definitely both hands in, in the snow, and not a good sign to have uh, the ski tips heading up. Here we have but his highlight of the oh, run. A a big backflip stomping. Yeah. It. Oh, that was not nice for the back. No, I think it was a little bit bigger than Christopher's, but uh, unfortunately the the back slap or the both the hands down, I'm not sure exactly what it was on the top hit. I think as you can see in the judge criteria, negative on the control. So sixty eight points for Felix. With a run like that to be sub seventy level is high today. <laughs> and we only have three riders now. Yeah. I'm my mind is already being blown. I can't believe how far they were sending those backflips. The further you send that hit, the flatter it gets. Yeah. And they're just not and shy. I believe that Felix even hit a little bit of a, 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 a not, not a counterface, but definitely some part where it was even flatter. Almost uphill. Yeah. <laughs> just stomping it, squatting it out. Griffin throwing up the moose. Next rider in the start gig. The rookie Griffin Moller from USA. Really like this guy's style. Did a couple of runs with him recently, the last few days, and putting out tweak safeties on uh, all the side hits that are so fun to session around here in uh, Belnord Arcalise. Getting also into the, the steep technical compulsory shoot. Same entry as Felix. Little bit slower into it, but stomping it a little bit better. Coming hot at the next hit. 360. Stomp. So difficult to do. Yeah, flat landing too. Yeah. Grabbing off that one. Pretty big, nice and stomped. It is the line of choice for the first few riders I think on we're the ski man category. Shifting it out. Yeah, you think you're going to see a lot of people coming through this line today? It is very obvious to be a winning line. Yeah. Although I see a, l a few more of them coming. A few more lines to be chosen, but this section for sure was proven to be a good idea so far. Yeah, nice. The same hit as Imar. Also Putting in another three, really smooth. Solid at the bottom. <laughs> nice run, Griff. Yeah, that, that <laughs> bottom hit. Another solid run. With two 360s, I'm not sure, did he spin in both directions? I don't think so. I think they were both left threes. So the, yeah, cool grab though. Yeah. Taking it really deep too, off Ivan Malakov here. I'm glad that we, yeah, nice. Really styly three there. Stomping his threes really well. That's what I was saying, he's a really styly rider. Well done, Griffin Muller. So impressed with the rookie class this season. Yeah. Some strong riding to be seen. One of his best mates, Ber Berkeley, already had a great appearance in the first event. And now Griffin shows the goods. Second with 76. Well done, Griff. I think he's going to be stoked with that. Oh, the rookies firing. Next rider up is someone who you know really well. In the start gate, the rookie, Greg Murray from New Zealand.
That's right, super rookie, I like to call him. Grabs everything, spins a lot of things. Really, really stylish, super strong rider. Followed in Fabian Lynch's shoes by winning Oberg four star last year to get on the tour. Needed to win or come second at that comp. Did it. Here he is. Hasn't had a lot, a lot of luck in the first two competitions, but. That's why there's quite some pressure on him, unfortunately. I love the way he rides, and unfortunately, he really has to, has to put down a good score now. There is the pressure on him. Grabbing high safety on that. I don't think anyone else has grabbed that compulsory air yet. Flat three. Stomping it. Head banging. Grabbing that out to <laughs> high safety on the other side. The level is through the roof. It's crazy. Yeah, mute as well. We've seen left side high safety, right side half safety, left side mute. Looking so smooth, fluid and controlled. No hesitation. Stomping at the RE Tracomi line. Also going for the transition. And oh! going big! <laughs> the biggest so far, 360. Float it, grab tail. Oh my god, he's done like five different tricks. <laughs> yeah, Craig. This is a ski movie today. Yeah, this is insane. You hear that? It's insane. It's not even insane. It's insane. So proud of you, Craig. Oh, yeah. He proved what we were expecting the last two events already. Super technical and creative freestyle -y. He Grabbing has it all. Or shifting or tricking every single hit. And that's the crucial part at the very top with the mandatory air already skied out. He found a good spot to hit it and here the flat spin three that landing is going to get bombed out but he's still stomping it how floaty was this <laughs> how big look at the track the, the tracks goes he like passed twice, it twice. <laughs> well done craig i think you're gonna be looking at a good score here today well done on the patience has it gone your way the first two stops it has here today way to keep the mental game strong and i was really hard to do I, i'm i'm expecting a huge score man yeah, setting himself apart by grabbing on the top hit where other people didn't. I think Christopher Turdell's crazy entry to that top section will probably do him a little bit better. So Craig Murray sitting second, 85 points. Yeah, buddy, you deserve that. New Zealand freeride represent. Oh, yeah. Well, well deserved. Whew. <laughs> and we're only five riders in. And another big hitter is waiting for us in the start gate. Up next, we have Marcus Ada from Italy. That's and right. he is no stranger to big lines and creative, uh, hitting creative features. So Christopher Turdell sitting in first, two rookies sitting second and third. This guy is not a rookie. This guy is Marcus Ada. This guy is a veteran of both freestyle and freeride. One of the only guys to compete in the World Tour and the Olympics at the same time. Unbelievable. And now this year, he wants to focus on the freeride World Tour, he said. That's right, Olympics was last time in Sochi, not in uh, South Korea this time. Here we go, the mandatory air, stomping it. Taking it a little bit further, skiers left to make sure he got a better landing, not landing other people's bomb holes, it's smart. Sorry not to be as enthusiastic anymore because we have seen that hit <laughs> being hit from every rider before. It's still super impressive. He's heading for a backflip. Just oh. getting around, he thought he had more air time, it seems like. I think the landing was a little bit flatter than he expected because <laughs> yeah. he took it too deep. The transfer side hit, this is the blind area, so hard to come quick through it. A little bit of tracks to follow now, and 360 into the technical exposed zone. Big, and will we see yeah. another big one? <laughs> Mixing it up, holy Styling moly. Styling it out. There's at least a shifty, if not a tail grab on that bottom hit. Really creative side hit transfer. It didn't even look like it went from this yeah. angle, airing over another rocky takeoff. And just when you think, okay, now we know what's coming. I thought he's going to go to the transfer just like Greg Mary before. Yeah. But no, he's going for a huge cliff air at the bottom. Yeah, it's tough when, when they're doing different stuff. Do you give points for opening a line? Do you give points for doing something different and creative? How can you know how different and creative it's going to be if other people don't or do do it later? But huge backflips like that, that's not debatable. That's always going to pump your score up.
and then a 360 blind into that shoot and finishing off just clearing that rock at the end signature, of the landing. Signature Marcus Eder, creative side happy. hit. And if you want another proof of his creativity, check his social media. He's doing a road show this year with his good mates on tour, and it's super cool to watch. Third, 82.3, Marcus Eder on the podium for now. We've only had six riders go, and this could be like these three riders that are on the podium now couldn't. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if they the finish podium or maybe they won't even be on the podium at all. The level is so high now, it's so crazy. We're seeing multiple tricks from multiple riders. Ah, oh, blowing me away. <laughs> it's just mind blowing. And I don't want to be, we, we repeated it so many times, but I don't want to be a judge today. Next one up in the start gate, we have Taisuke Kuzunoki, the super friendly and stylish smooth rider from Japan, Canada. And we know that he's not only used to riding Chipao, he has proven to be a super solid rider in all kinds of terrain. Yeah, that's right. One of the styliest riders on tour, and there's a lot of styly riders on tour, so I think that's really saying something. He's going for the almost standard, amazing but standard top section. Yeah, you have to start your run with that big air in the middle. I hope it's still possible for the rest of the skiers to hit it, that it's not too bombed out. And another big air. What? Stomping. How do you do that? How was that possible? It looked like the landing was going to hit him too hard, be too yeah. flat. Took that one deep as well. Taisuke. You could hear it in my voice. I was like, oh, no, that's going to be hard. But no. Did that one as well, really blind hit, taking a little bit more fall line. That was a little bit bigger. So as soon as you're skiing the same line as other people, you get compared to them. And in terms of your ranking, your score, it's really important to be going a little bit bigger, going a little bit faster. He was maybe a little bit slower in the top section, but getting into a creative new bottom section now. Only two or three people have hit this, I think. And cleans it. And also going for the transfer. Yeah, double grab too. Starley from finished. Taisuke. Oh, no. Oh, that was another great run. But uh, we have to say, like, uh, it's going to be tough to score well if you if you don't have a heavy hitting run from top to bottom because we have seen such high level already. Yeah, we've seen a lot of people ski this top shoot, and he was a little bit slower. Cool shifty in the air, but like a little bit backseat on the landing. Nice three as well, but a little bit wild in the air. Still stomps it. Like I'm saying, any of these runs could be podium runs on another day, but the level just skyrocketed this year. What's happened? Multiple tricks from multiple riders, and we're only like less than 10 people through. I think it is the snow, which is quite predictable. It's fast. It's uh, you don't get hook up too much from the from the uh, from the snow because you don't dig in too much. And here we have a uh, Taiski score with a 74.33, ending up currently in fifth position. That's right, he needs a big score today. I don't think he's done super well in the first two competitions. So best three results count out of the first four competitions to try and qualify yourself for the finals in Verbier. So he's gonna have his work cut out for him. He's gonna have to do a little bit better in Fieberbrunn to pull it all together. Yeah. Oh, I just hope that we don't have any clouds coming in to cover the sun because it would change the game for the for the riders who don't have uh, good visibility the sun definitely also uh, adds up to good conditions that are the base for this terrain at this level of riding next rider up in the start is none other George Rodney 2015 third world tour champion carving a crazy entrance to this thing doubling down Whoa, no, George. Oh, oh man. No. And he's got it for sure. Oh, that was a, another creative approach to an incredible gnarly line on top. That's exactly the kind of thing that sets you apart. Doing a double through a gnarly section like that where everyone else has just skied in and done a single. If he had managed to stick that, in which I thought he had, that would have been a huge score. But this is the thing, the level has got so high now that if you want to set yourself apart, you have to do something that really stands out. And to do something that really stands out, it's like, are you 95% sure you can stop it? Boom! Big back here to finish it off. <laughs> it's such a shame that he was going for the winning run. You could see that from the very always beginning. Does. He always does.
and he is gutted. George Rodney, the golden rod. Here we have that very tricky. He did a double into that very tricky section and wheeled it out and then got hooked up. Yeah, a little Boom. bit side hill as well, huh? But look at the body control. Like, so uh, strong. Maybe to see the upside of the down, but look at the huge backflip at the bottom. Oh, sending man. it as far as Greg Murray before. George Rodney, Golden Rod, member of the Wolfpack. <laughs> Skiing so hard right now, never afraid to send. Aaron Style, maxed out for that ginormous backflip and taking that double off the top. I wonder if anyone else will do that now. I wonder if they can see it from the top. I wonder if anyone's streaming on their phones up there. <laughs> <laughs> Turdell, sitting pretty in the hot seat. He's won in Andorra before, I believe. He did with an amazing run. That was in his rookie year. He went further to the skiers left and hit two amazing big cliffs. George Rodney, 50 flat. That means that he loved his run. Even though he crashed, <laughs> they were like, well, it was still pretty sick, mate. All right, yeah, the, the action just doesn't stop. And another heavy hitter we have from France, Mikael Bimbos in the start gate. So Mikael re-qualifying back onto the World Tour after a small absence from it. He qualified, got on, didn't re-qualify, had to fight through the qualifiers for another couple of years. Gets into the same gnarly top section as Christopher Turla. Even takes the air into it, I think, and an air out. Super solid. He found a really good pocket to land into, which is getting tighter and tighter. Taking this one straight, but taking it far down the line. The Malakoff air standard. <laughs> As a double, too. Like, with standard, I, it's ironically spoken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really solid line here from Mikel Bimbos. Similar to Christopher Turdell, but no backflip. And, and it's crazy that you have to compare, like, oh, here's yeah. no backflip, so. Yeah. So oh my sick. God. Oh, the sniperest of sniper landings. <laughs> How can he line up that perfectly? Because it's rolling, it's blind, and you have to find that two-meter pocket. Oh, so Mikael impressive. Cal Bimbos. Yeah, he's pumped. He <laughs> should be. Oh my gosh. Yeah, the the super sick, but standard top here, not flipping the the middle cliff. Maybe a good idea since he's landing in a bomb hell now off that same takeoff. But this here down the bottom. Wow, we McFly. How would you compare it? You, that's the tricky thing. It was an amazing round from Mikael. But uh, the only little downside or comparison, what, what you have to do, he didn't show any tricks. And we have seen a couple of riders who did even two. And it's not all about the tricks. It's not all about the tricks, but it's definitely, if you have the big mountain segment and the trickery in it, that's what is the best, and he was missing the, the, the tricks. 79. Still a solid score, 79 points. And fourth for now, without a trick, that's still pretty impressive. It is, and we have still a quite, we have still more than half of the riders field to go. Next one up, another creative rider we have uh, in the start gate, Connor Pelton from USA, currently resident of Jackson Hole, but grown up and learned to ski in Michigan. And if you know, the USA and Michigan is not a typical ski place. That's right. I think he actually now resides in Telluride, Colorado. Recent move away from Jackson. But like you say, Michigan, where he learned to ski. His parents are here supporting him, actually. Talking about how he used to do 100 vertical meter laps. Getting into the tight, Ganali vertical, the compulsory. Stomping it clean. Nice work. You have to set the bar high from the very beginning if you want to score well today it's such a crazy level putting in a nice grab not going for the Melikov cliff but super creative side hit there that was really cool sending it deep very kind of already signature wise always with a tweak with a little shifty in his moves to show how solid he is. And he's also going for yeah. the three, just like Marcus Eder. Super Will he nice. also hit the transition? He Spinning does. the other way, right side three to go with the left side three, holding on to it. 
really solid there from Connor Pelton. He's always talked about how he's wanted to put a big left and a big right three into the same run, and today he's done it. Takes another fun little air out the bottom just to top the cherry off the top of the cake, the cream on the mashed potatoes, as they say in New Swedish. <laughs> You are right, and he will be happy with his run for sure. Unfortunately, though, there was a little bit of an issue in his landing of his second 360, but here we have him in the top section, super solid, and the side hit in the middle. He's got stomp legs on him as well as style, but this three, it's into exposure that's so gnarly, taking it deep and carving in left and spinning right on this next hit. How big hand of an down. issue is it? I'm I would not say sure. hand down. That's a stage one landing. I, I would say that's not a back flap. Back flap? Back flap. Wow. Lappity. Sick round, Connor. Representing for the wolf pack. You can see your sticker there. And party on. Tony party. Should be a happy man right now. So rad. He said he took it slow. I didn't look, didn't look like he took it that slow to me. <laughs> 75 points for Conor Felton, 6th place. Next one is another favorite for this year's overall tour and also favorite for each tour stop. He has it all from big mountain skills to the trickery. Creative line choices as we've seen Already on the first comp in his on his home turf in Canada, where he took away the win. Logan Pahoda from Canada in the start gate. And it's hard to be styly when you're that tall. He's a tall man, almost too tall for the start gate. Topping out on that. And heading on to the complete other side now. First ski mail we've seen go over this way. He's got Christopher Turdell, Craig Murray, and Marcus Eder to beat. Christopher Turdell and Marcus Eder, I think they're up there with him in the top standings now that Ava Malikov is out to injury. Earing in. Really sick interest to that cool uh, Different yeah. line so far. What's he got in store? Nice backy, oh. but coming unstuck. Taking it too deep Up to the flat, rotating. I think. Maybe I landing in a bomb hole, but yeah, he looks oh. sore. Oh no. That was a heavy hit. Oh no. Nice standing now. I'm glad to see that. He's kind of okay but it looks like he has a hurt knee uh, take your time Logan yeah he under rotated I think he put it straight to his feet but it was a little bit flatter than he expected a little bit of under rotation he was yeah, definitely front so. heavy laying it out but super cool entrance like big air into there just like it's nothing he's one of these these magic men that combines freestyle and free ride yeah like you say under rotating Nasty crash, really hope he's all right after that. Hasn't needed a ski dude, hasn't needed a ski ninja to come and help him get his equipment. Making his way gingerly off the course. Best wishes, Logan, I really hope you're all right. We've got Fever Run coming up in a few days and you're sitting near the top of the table. Love your riding, loved your winning run in Canada. Oh, that looks good to see him ride down the mountain. Yeah. Oh, I've it's hard to tell. You have so much tension in your body that uh, you don't feel minor injuries or some knee stuff can be uh, kind of uh, fade away by adrenaline. Let's hope for the best that he's not injured, that he can continue his uh, strive for the Freeride World Tour title because he's on the stroll. Yeah, that's right. Skiing really hard, skiing really strong. Did a couple of laps with him in the last few days and it's super impressive to see. I think he spun or sevened one of the the pretty gnarly natural hits they have here in Valnod Akali. So yeah, he's uh, he'll be back to fight another day. Hopefully in fever in the next few days. Christopher hey, Tuedel still sitting in the hot seat for now, seeking out of the gate. Claimed the hot seat until this point. We have his compatriot. Next right up at the start, the veteran Rene Parkered. Unbelievably what this Swede has performed in the past with three wins on the free ride, uh, of the a bit of the extreme and three times second place. That's a stats for his own. Of course, also a third world tour champion in the past. And taking Christopher Turdell's ear into the top section. Challenging the winning run already, but going down? No. Loss of control. I don't know what oh, happened yo, in that snow yo, cloud yo, there. Yo, 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 yo. Oh. I think it must be getting super skied out in there. Backflip from Rainer Bakarid. 
Oh, stomping Stomp down. It. I love seeing him progress with tricks. He learned that in the last few years, but it comes unstuck on the Ivan Malikov cliff. What happened there? Hit a rock on the takeoff, maybe? It didn't look like he was going to land it as soon as he was in the air. He yeah. was unbalanced. Something must have grabbed his ski on the way off the lip. You're right. It definitely looked like it because, and especially with Rainy Barcaret, I've actually never seen something like it from the Swede. Really sorry to see you go down, Rainer. Love watching you ski. That backflip was super rad. Probably one of the biggest I've seen you do in a competition. Stomped it so hard, but I think that you have become a victim of the most popular line getting skied out. Will it be the winning line? It's going to be the take a lot of beating, but the takeoffs and landings are getting a bit punched out now, but skied out maybe a bit sun affected as well. So it's getting more difficult as it goes through the riders. Sometimes it gets easier. In this case, it's getting more difficult. Sometimes it's great to have a line to follow, to have a track to follow. Sometimes it's good to be the first through. Uh, with the snow, I thought it would be okay because it's not that deep. It's uh, it's quite consistent and firmish, but I think that that many people hitting the same features. Yeah, it was heavy traffic in there. And here we see him trying to shut down speed just enough and probably the, the smoke in the air, the, the snow he threw up in the air, it just uh, got him out of rhythm. Yeah, so a loss of control on the top section and uh, another loss of control further down, probably catching a rock on the takeoff of the Ivan Malikov cliff. Just to give some background on that cliff, I think Ivan Malikov pioneered it when it was a four-star here and then hit it even bigger when it was a wheel tour stop. There was a much less snow that year, so it was huge. Randa Barker had only 16.67 today. He'll be back to fight another day. He's had a good result so far this season, so... And as you can see, he was checking his base, so I'm pretty sure you were right. He was... Uh, got hooked up by a rock at the takeoff. But even that, usually Reina is anticipating and ollieing beforehand with all his experience and riding skills. Very unusual visual that we see here, uh, Reina Barker going down. And next, in the start gate. Oh we yeah, another creative rider in the start gate, Fabio Studer from Austria. Super style guy. Love watching him ride. I keep thinking about his run in Chamonix a few years ago. He put down a, I believe it was a right three and a left cork seven. You're right. It was one of his opening lines, you have to imagine. That rookie was year. his rookie year. Christopher Turdell, 88. Craig Murray, 85. And who do we have in third? Was it Marcus Eder? I believe so. His very good friend and partner in the road show. Here we have the start of the line for Fabio Studer with a big air into that shoot. Keeping the momentum high. And as we just talked about, we can expect some trickery from th this man. With a... Uh, oh, oh, no. no. Over-rotated. It's again, very unusual to see that. He's so relaxed and comfortable in the air. And he is disappointed for sure. Yeah, bad. Can you imagine? It's super tough, Fabio. I'm sorry to see it happen. Maybe got a little bit bucked on the takeoff. A few people have hit it now. I wonder if it's forming up well or maybe people have carved off it or pushed off it really hard to to mean that it's become uneven. But really cool top here into that shoot, the same as Logan Pohoda, but unfortunately also the same as Logan Pohoda coming unstuck with a trick on Jonathan Penfield's ear. Calling it Jonathan Penfield's ear because he was the first to open it this time. Uh, Ivan Melikov usually opens it. Um, I'm glad to hear that we have at least one cliff uh, named after Ivan Day. Deserves it. Really, really sick rider. And uh, made us feel really welcome when we went to Russia. Showed us around there. And uh, Anna Rolova and uh, Andre, the photographer, also representing out of Russia today here in Belnod Arkelis. But Fabio Studer, he'll be a little bit disappointed with that. Hasn't gone super well for him so far this season. Really talented, styly rider. I know he's got good runs to put down. Just hasn't come together from today, unfortunately. Yeah, it seems not to be his year. Although, we, if you see... Uh the way he rides in the off in the free sessions, it's incredibly creative and solid. And especially having uh, a, being teamed up with uh, Felix Bemers and Marcus Ada, they are the ones that hang out the most together, and of course shred together. And you can see they are inspiring each other. And puts down a super big, clean, styly three off the bottom here. Yeah, Showed it that he can. It's usually his bread and butter. Maybe he was trying to cork it out quite a lot. Tough uh, takeoff and landing to cork on. Cork three means that your body is flat in the middle of the rotation. It's the styly cool thing to do. I love watching it happen. Yeah. Sometimes you put a hand drag into the takeoff, then it helps cork it out. But quite a difficult spot to do that. And, uh, not working out for Fabio, unfortunately. Oh, 
without knowing I would have even expected him to do a seven at some point on the run. Probably at the bottom hip, uh, wind lip. Yeah, maybe he was planning to if he'd stomped the rest of his run. Yeah. He knows that that's uh, the level of, <sighs> of traction you need to win. But up next, we have uh, someone who in impressed us a lot at the Verbi Extreme, the final event of the season last year, Ryan Fay. The rookie had a great performance on the back de Ross. Ryan Fire firing on course, getting super smoothly down through here. Great technique. Never looks like he's in any danger of crashing in there. He's also capable of doing some tricks, but maybe a little bit intimidated by what he saw from uh, some heavy hitters before, like uh, Fabio Studer or Logan Pejoda. That's right. He's seen a lot of people crash off that area, maybe knows that the landing's getting bombed out. If people have crashed, they have to walk around to grab their skis, and it makes it even more bombed out. So, uh, cool tweaked out side grab there. Got really good technique and good style. It's uh, something magic that I've never quite understood. Where do you mount your skis if you want to do that? Forward or backwards? Coming to a new zone. No one skied here yet. No tracks to follow, but nicer landings. Looking to line up something creative. Oh, yeah. And stomping. Nice tr kind of transition. He, yeah. he aired over, actually, the, the real cliff and uh, landed perfectly in the o open section. Yeah, we call that a tranny finder. Tranny finder, you're right. That is not a tranny. That is a transition. If you find the transition, you'll land smoothly. So Ryan Fire putting one down today, taking that one deep. A little bit of a spread eagle after the high safety. I think that was uh, one of my favorite unintentional moves. It actually looks quite styly. And the side hit transfer, like you were saying, finding the tranny, hitting the tranny. It's going to be tough to score. It's so different from the other runs. It's slightly easier to score runs when people ski in the same place because it's just what did you do? Did you go faster or bigger or what trick? But here it's like, well, the creativity, the blindness, the, the coming into it at a, at a side hit angle where you need to make sure you've got exactly the right uh, take off to, to land perfectly, gets the water up, gets the high five from the Swedes. They're stoked on him, just like they were stoked on him uh, in the World Tour final last year in Switzerland. We threw that huge backflip on the Beck de Ross, crazy stuff. Like I was saying, he skis so technically well, but also has these tricks. And if you make your skis further back, it's easier to ski fast and controlled and technically well. And if you make your skis further forward, it's easier to do tricks and rotations and spins. They've got less uh, swing weight. So uh, this magic new generation that I'm so pumped on watching ski that he's, he's a part of, you know, doing these uh, high safeties and uh, shifties and spins and grabs, but also creative, uh, strong mental strength, you know, hitting these side hits and finding these lines. I, I can't stop talking about how great they are, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> and you should be. Uh, it's so enjoyable, impressive to see those guys ride. Nervous moments waiting for the score for Ryan Fire, like they're I saying. I believe it's super tough for the judges at the moment because the scores are stacking up and they're compressing. They, they don't have a lot of margin. We have Ryan Faye with 70 points in a bit. That's right. Seventh place for now, and we're roughly uh, halfway through. No, more than halfway through. Two thirds of the way through. We are, and we have another one, a big name in the start gate. Two time for World Tour champion, Loic Golon Baton from France. Lacluza, the bre breeding ground for freestyle and freeride skiers from a very early age on. So, Loic Kalompaton, another one of these uh, super magic men who used to ski in level one films, doing park stuff, uh, pipe and quarter pipe and crazy hits like that. And now he's pioneering a big drop straight off the top. Boom. He had a super sick run here a few years ago. I think he switched one and then threed and then sent a huge cliff at the bottom. So started with a huge cliff, now going to the backflip. Looks so <laughs> relaxed. <laughs> so comfortable. It's unbelievable. Really, he uses another approach to the Malakoff air from the side, going even bigger or more air time at least. Those bomb holes further down because he took off somewhere else. It makes it look good. And he has all the tricks in the bag. Sevens, threes, backies. Oh, cool, yeah. High safety to side shifty. Oh, he's and lining up the again. same bottom hit. But it's flat. Boom. Oh. 
That is redemption right there. He hit that clip <laughs> yeah. a few years ago and bombed out. He went too big and it was too flat. This year there's more snow, slightly steeper landing, went a little bit slower, put down the run of his dreams that just eluded him last time, and that's got to be a podium contender. Oh, yeah, you're so right. That is definitely a full, complete run with all the tricks. New takeoffs. We've seen several cliffs with no tracks on it. So creative and strong. He's pumped. He's had a couple of issues in some of his other runs this year, but this one, wow. Really excited to see that. Gets the congrats from the current hot seat, Christopher Turdell. Look at the relaxed rat landing. Oh, That's like so if you want to do a textbook on like backflips off cliffs, put that one in. Grabbing everything. Such a pleasure to watch him ride. And here the redemption cliff. It is not as high as, la as the last time you hit it, but definitely <laughs> as flat. Well, thanks and to the uh, props there. Yeah. I mean, he hit it first last time. I was following his tracks. I went small because he overshot. That time he backslapped out, and I pretty much did as well. Uh, but he's back. He's got it this time. Really stoked to see someone stomp that. I was hoping someone would today. It was the day for it. Squats out the landing. Really strong legs. Loic Colombaton. Former Freeride World Tour champion. On Here the podium for now. Third, 83. It. What a level again we have on our hands. It's in unbelievable. Yeah, buddy. And so hard to find creative, new, and technical high-level lines. As, you, as we, we saw already, we had some uh, veterans that know how to deal with difficult situations get into difficulty in the obvious center couloir that we have a beautiful visual right now on screen. Yeah, you can see how rowdy it is. Imagine standing at the top of that. That's what these guys are doing. They're standing on top of that run. But if there is someone who can deal with uh, skied out and gnarly conditions, it is Mr. Sam Lee. Next in the start gate, the New Zealand Wanaka local Sam Lee. The Ibex challenging Christopher Turdell, Craig Murray and Loic Colompaton. That's another rookie from New Zealand, Craig Murray. Sam Lee is not a rookie, had a great year as a rookie, came sixth overall, I believe, and taking the same top air as Logan Pahoda, taking it deep, stomping it clean, just looks so comfortable at speed and chopped up snow. He does. Look at the control he has in those big turns and the chopped up snow, just as he said, and now going probably to a backflip. As we know him, he has the tricks also in his bag skiing in Verbi a lot and now yeah. a new resident of Revelstoke, Canada. Skis all over the world, this guy. Always returns home to New Zealand. He's been learning tricks to go with his Ibexy style of technical lines. Put in some nice grabs and a nice backflip. He still mounts his skis quite far back. I think that's part of what allows him to ski so controlled at high speed and, and cut up snow. So it means he's less likely to do 360s. But prove me wrong, Sam. Coming into this perfect 360 hit, um. It's going to take Marcus Eaters here instead and take it even deeper and stomp it and double out the bottom. Yeah, boy! Yes, Sadly! Oh, yeah. You're the Ibex. Such a solid run, man. God damn, I'm proud of you right now, man. I know you've been struggling mentally the last few days, so what a way to come back and send it. <laughs> Loving it. Yeah, New Zealand freeride. Sam Lee and Craig Murray, the two young guns. Showing how it's done on New Zealand snow. It's soft on top, it's firm underneath. <laughs> That's what we talked this morning, you're right. That's right. <laughs> Casual on the backflip, relaxed and stompies. Found also some a new section to put his uh, skis on. So he is a smart rider on top of being creative and going big. That's and as right. you said, he combined it with a double here. Oh man, Sam Lee. <laughs> Loving his skis. Fifth place, 80 points. Good stuff, dude. Really, really happy for you. Putting down the top five. Could be a top five finish. They've still got another five or six riders left who can challenge that. Lots of really talented riders, so not safe in the top five for now, but to have the opportunity to finish on the top five on a day like this at a level like this. <laughs> yeah, you're exactly right. This run could have been an easier podium run on other contests. But today, you need to have something super spectacular and exceptional with the level we have here in Val Noir Arcalis. 
And the next up, Berkeley Patterson. Fourth place in the first competition in Golden, BC, Canada. Looking to follow it up here. I think he crashed in the Huckabee the restage in Canada competition. And now he is skiing with a slightly injured leg. Tweaked it throwing a switch five on a big natural hit the other day. Hopefully he's back on form. He's been uh, taking uh, painkillers and ice pack in it. So really hope that he can send it like he normally does and getting and off to a good looks start. Looks like it. Oh, yes. This kid can ski. Very good friend with Griffin Muller. They're traveling together. Made it to the uh, from the rookie, sorry, from the third world qualifiers to the elite class. Super the same smooth year. three. To the Melikov air, to a nice air out. If you come out of the air in a turn and air something else, cool style there. I really like that hang time. Connecting the dots well. He skis like a veteran. It's so impressive. Kind of reminds me of Drew Tabke. <laughs> yeah, it does a bit. You're right. Can you can you say young Drew Tabke? Is it is that offensive? We we'll have to talk to Drew about it. Okay, <laughs> but Dublin down. And in his final hit, sending it deep. Boom! <laughs> so casual. And finding another hit as well. Is he gonna? Yeah, so but please stay on your feet. Stay on your feet. <laughs> Maybe Don't scare me like that, man. <laughs> gave away a really good score there. Uh, it was just a hand down. I mean, like, if I was a judge, I'd say, well, that hand down <laughs> cancelled out him hitting that, so it doesn't matter. I, I'm not a judge, so I don't know if that's how they're going to judge it, but i just so impressed with his run. Look how floaty these threes are, how relaxed they are in the air. Off natural hits, this is not a park jump, people. And another Reaching three. for the tail, stomping it. The fact he went for another hit after that, everyone else just skied out. So the fact he tried to carve so hard back into it that he could make another hit, I, I respect that. Even if it doesn't gain him any points, I don't think it should lose him any points. It was only a hand down and on the landing. I don't think it was a full back slap. But Berkeley Patterson skiing with an injured leg. What a boss. Well summed up. Well summed up. You think he's worried in the yeah, hot seat there? It's gonna be so tricky for the judges to put him in the in the ranking. Yeah. Just want to give a real quick shout out to Christopher Turdell skiing that top section like it was nothing. Just fluid, smooth. Like that that turn where he shut it down so quickly, and then Rainer Barkery had struggled a little bit. Maybe the snow was more cut up for Rainer Barkery. Maybe he clipped a rock, but Rainer Barkery is no chump. He is such a boss skier. He is defending. Uh, not defending wheelchair champion, defending second place, defending Verbier champion. So many results under his belt, so much experience and strength. And if he has a trouble with something and Christopher Turdell nails it, then that's just the biggest compliment for me. Here we go. I think we're about to see the score with an 82, currently fourth place. This is so stacked. Hangs his head there. Is he disappointed? Because fourth place on a day like today, that's incredible. Berkeley Patterson. You are fourth place. You came fourth in Canada in Golden, BC, kicking horse. Okay, attention, boys and girls. We have another one of the big names in the start gate, the current Forward World Tour champion, Leo Slimit from France. That's right. About Leo, to drop in. Leo Slimit, the fifth to last rider. That means that our previous rider, Berkeley Patterson, is guaranteed a top 10. And with injured leg, that's an amazing run. So Leo Slimmett, defending World Tour champion. Who has he got to compete against today? Christopher Turdell, Craig Murray, Loic Colompaton. Such heavy hitters. And he's going, as usual, for a win. He's not holding back, but these, this level is insane today. What has he got to offer for us? Really sick run here a few years ago with Ooh, three and a backflip. New approach. Oh, what you got? Nice. Oh, yeah. So creative. Nice. No one saw that coming. Yeah, so he's got two hits in that look is right cool uh, and another one that no one else has done. He's heading all the way to the skier's left side. Not many tracks in there, actually no tracks. Holy huge air. Huge. Stomp with a little bit of a back slap, I think. I'm not sure, I don't want to call it too early, maybe he just stomp that. He flat, so he had to flex a lot. Going for a double there. Such a creative line. No one else ski down this look as right hand side. You can see there's uh well some people have, but like not recently when it's been snowball, it's been rollerball. You can see there's like all those little rollerballs in the snow that's from the sun hitting it and uh, getting a bit wet and heavier. Makes it a little bit more difficult to ski, but he is making light work of it with the big three out the bottom. Oh, yo, 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 yeah. Unfortunately, not the cleanest landing. 
but I was sure we're gonna see a trick off of that because uh, he was still missing out on one because he, he has it all in the bags. So how do you judge that? He went way further lookers right than most of the other skier guys, did a creative ear out of the shoot that no one else even got close to, did a really creative flat ear, might have got a little bit backseat on the landing, spun a three, did a double, like, such a complete run, but is that small loss of control gonna hurt him? It looks like it is in the judging criteria. And That's also one. a crucial point for the judging. What kind of execution was that? The hands were down. I wouldn't. Well, I think he stopped it about as, as hard one. as you can. <laughs> Such a flat yeah, landing. Yeah, yeah. But of course, you Comes have to choose your landings choice. to to actually be able to stop it. Exactly. So Here we have Leo Slimmett waiting for his score. He knows he had some issues in his line. He's podiumed here before. He's defending the will to a title. Turdell sitting in the hot seat, still second rider in this category. We've got four to go and he's still on top. That's how sick that run was. I'm glad the judges rewarded that top section because it was so rowdy. It was really steep, it was really tight. He aired into a really steep chute that had a compulsory air at the bottom. Shut it down perfectly and aired out. Big backflip. The judges are discussing now. I As wonder where they're looking at him. I'm very him. sure that they're also discussing about line choice as we have seen something completely new and fresh. Unfortunately, with some control issues, that's also a talking point for sure. They're going to review now on some uh, some replays. They are able to ask for replays on their screen. Leo Slimmett, only 66 points today. That control issue really hurting him. He's disappointed. And but it, it is also due to the amazing level we have today. That's right. I think this is one of the most amazing competitions I've ever seen. I was kind of wondering what was going to happen after the, the tragic events of this week, the competition being put off until the, the last, uh, second to last possible weather day, the riders waiting around. Uh, you know, they've been skiing hard. They've been resting sometimes. It's difficult to know when to peak. You are right. What do you think those riders have in mind when they drop in here? Well, I think Trace next Cook. Right, is next thinking. rider up is Trace Cook from Canada going into the NAR. Very chopped up already. Center couloir, we can call it. The couloir of Gunnar. Sending it deep out of there, though. Stomping. Also, no stranger to trickery. Yeah, with the cork three, styling it out. Reaching for the tail. Coming to the Ivan Malikov here, sending that to... Big time! Yeah, nice. <laughs> that was Sandy. So this is kind of the standard top run so far. With standard, we mean the ones that are at the very top of the uh, scoreboard at the moment chose exactly that. But he stopped. See the air time, the Can't laid back. wait to see a replay. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're blowing my mind. I hope... Oh, yo, 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 yo. Oh, what was that? No one else has even hit that. And he hit it at pace with the backflip. The backflip, yeah. please. I saw, uh, oh, yeah, here we have a beautiful three. Multiple tricks. And I hope Mr. Cineflex, Evel Kloten, has the backflip also to deliver for us. Yeah, a here little bit have of a the, hand the down. Middle section. Oh, but first we're going to look at the score. We might come back to the backflip. But it was a control issue in there, unfortunately. Yeah. And it's the only chance how to separate the riders today with this high level. Yeah, unfortunately. But I'm pretty sure we're going to see that backflip in the highlight reel. I think so too. Big up, Trace Cook. Way to, way to send it. Yeah, I mean, a little bit of a hand down, maybe one of the other ears, and a little bit of a, a butt check or a back slap on that backflip. That's tough, man. It's so tough out there. We are getting into the finals of today. We have three riders to go, and first one up of those three is Jan Rossis from Switzerland. Up next. So Jan Rossis on course. Pretty up there in the results at the moment. Podium in the Japan event staged in Golden BC Canada. He was a rookie last year on tour, and it's so impressive the maturity and level of riding he shows from day one. Magic man, another of these magic men with that uh, crazy level of such strong free ride and tricks. 
I think we'll probably see one coming into this hit. Yeah, nice, nice. flat three. <laughs> Mixing it up. So it's a flat three into this uh, side hit with shifty. Flat three is like a backflip, but a 360 off axis. Taking the ne next hit deep as well. Yeah, style master. Do you think you'll spin this one? What does the physicist have on offer for us? The he mathlete. knows what gravity does to him. He can play with it. Nice 360 of that trainee. Of that lip, we have seen a lot of traffic. Unfortunately, he didn't go as far as the other ones. Yeah, that's right. A light of his run for sure. A little bit hesitant, so maybe fluidity down, but his control will be high, technique will be high, line score yeah. not bad. So he, he could make top 10. Of yeah. course, our kind of criticism is uh, on a very high level. So it was a great run, but how can you separate those riders with these amazing lines from each other? Exactly. You have to look at those little things that separate them. Yeah, and it feels really picky to do that. I'd kind of compare it against, like, if you look at a basketball team and they look like they're normal size because they're next to each other, and you compare it to a normal person and they're giant. <laughs> <laughs> these guys in snowboarding is a super athlete here, and the things they're doing is uh, quite similar to each other because they're all so good, but we have to separate them somehow. And sometimes it's a picky little thing, like exactly how you land if you put a hand in the snow. As a spectator, you... Okay, so apparently we're having some streaming problems here at the moment. If you can hear us, we're going to be back with you as soon as we can. can show you a clip to get you psyched for Fever Bro. Yeah. And until then, look at that beautiful image of the whole venue. You see that top steep section straight out of the start gate. So welcome back, guys. Had a little bit of a streaming problem just then. Checking out some snow on top of some slightly firmer snow. It makes pretty good comp snow. And Stefan Heusel, ready to rip, feeling 100% again, dropping in about a minute, and he is getting psyched in the start gate after not the best two competitions to start the season off. Good to hear that he's feeling better again. Here so we are back. back. Welcome back everyone to the live stream. Unfortunately, we've had a couple of problems sending it out to you. Uh, we're aware of those problems and we have not sent any riders well. We've been waiting. Stefan Heusel patiently waiting in the gate. The 41 year old veteran getting psyched to put his run down on the Bassa Negra in about 10 seconds. Here we have, so happy to hear that he is more confident in his riding again after the injury last year here in Andorra where he overshot a huge cliff. Stefan Heusel from Austria on course. Going to the skier's left. Look his right. Who's he got to beat? Christopher Turdell, Craig Murray, and Loic Colombaton. The rookie High scores sandwiched. we have. <laughs> we have to know if you switched in on late onto this live stream, the riding level is through the roof. And Stefan has to play the strong skiing game as he does so fast out of there so fast but not the riding style he would love to show i know that he's super picky on himself but now he's back yeah i wonder if that's stefan heusel mode stefan heusel mode is a fast mode it looks like he's not holding back there have been a few features that he should have hit in my eyes to score all the way up because we've seen some trickery and big mountain skills in the in that section where he just rode big fast turns but he was going fast to that section here super fast and the thing is that if you're riding we'll the same line as other people you get show us another them. trick oh, 
nearly calling a backflip. <laughs> cool Which he double. showed at the last event. Doubling down through that last section though. Stefan Heusel, 41 years old, putting down the runs down. Fast skiing, cool air up the top. But with a level as high as it's been today, I think it's going to be tough for him to break into the top 10. He had to be he had to be waiting in the Stargate for or they left him waiting in the Stargate for quite a while. I don't hope that didn't throw off the focus of him. Cause I usually see uh, kind of more complete runs, and with complete I mean in the middle section I'm definitely missing some features that will uh, ref be reflected in the score. Judge's criteria is positive though. No control issues, so no, could be a good score after all. You're right. But it's all about the, the line you choose as well, not only about control, it is the line that you choose and uh, it's going to be tough for Stefan today to have a top score because of the high level we have seen already. Not a lot of crashes today. That's right. I think only one or two people have lost a ski, but Stefan coming in 17th, 58.6. Next rider up, already on course, we have Drew Tapke, the last rider. Drew Tapke from USA, currently resident in Seattle. Also a veteran, winner of both the Free Ski and Free Ride World Tours. Really cool style. Hope he's alright with uh, Berkeley being compared to him. <laughs> Getting into the same year as, who do we see in here? Leo Slimmett. Leo Slimmett, very creative approach. He told me, man, I'm last in the in the uh, start list, so the central cooler will be completely skied out. He That's predicted smart. it very smartly, but he sent that air so hard, far. Nice. Holy moly. No one else has hit that. He's the last person to had a fresh landing. Big uphill <laughs> side three. What a creative <laughs> cat. Do between features and then finishing it off with a huge feature. Get in there, buddy. Stops Yee! it. Not finished. Oh, stop it. Yeah. yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Oh, that doesn't count. That doesn't count. It doesn't count. It, it was. It was on the flat. He was on the cat track. They stopped judging there. Hope so. I have no idea. I have <laughs> no idea if it counts or not. But God, I hope please it doesn't. Please not. Please not. Oh, he's always been a big advocate of having to make it through the finish Look line. Look at that huge air in the middle. Oh, and, and the then uphill then three. three. <laughs> kind of a double. Yeah, so sick. One of the best runs I've seen from Drew for a long time. And An he has put down some amazing runs. Into the biggest backflip we see seen today. Into the flats, passing all that. Many air over the rocks. What happened underneath? It? Oh, oh, man. Please don't, don't score that crash at the bottom. Please yeah. no. I don't want them to, but I think they might. Uh, Drew Tabke has always been a big advocate of the finish line as where the judging line. So it might be a negative day. We, we didn't see his crash. I hope we're going to see a replay of that. Yeah, I think he like clipped a death cookie on the way onto the cat track or something. Looks like he might even hurt his knee. Such if a it, shame. If it was before the cat track, they, they might have to judge it. Yeah. And if he lost his ski, so that would mean he has no score. Yeah, which is such from, a shame after from a run like that. I, w I call it the winning run. Yeah, what happens there? Just catches an edge coming back onto the cat track. I mean, he's going so hot, but he looks so in control. Drew He's Tabke, still cheered up. thank you so much for that incredible run. So creative, so smooth, so stylish. You're my hero of today. You are the hero of today. Drew Tapke, we love you. <laughs> Hugs all round. The Wolfpack. Yeah, Congratulating as we, Drew. As we mentioned, it's a no score. Zero points for having from, lost a ski. From one of the highest score of today, for sure, I claim it. It was so incredible. To Tab, you take a bow. <laughs> oh no, Drew! Sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
So, Oof. what's our uh, final standings then? It's hard to digest. So hard. Christopher Turdell on top, staying in the hot seat from the second rider to the end. Craig Murray, the New Zealand rookie, second place. So proud of that. Lower Colomboton, former Free Ride World Tour winner in third place. Beckley Patterson riding with the sore leg, getting his second fourth of the season. Marcus Eder, Jan Rasir, Sam Lee, Mikael Bumbos, Griffin Muller, Connor Pelton, all style masters, putting down amazing runs today just to get in the top ten. Taisuki, also a style ma master. Ayman I've, Navarro opening the lines today. Ryan Fire, super smooth creative skiing. Femix Weemers sending it to Leo Slim at an amazing run. Trace Cook, huge backflip. Stefan Hoisel, George Rodney, Reina Barker, Logan Bahoda, unfortunate, having some kind of issues in their run. Fabio Studer, Drew Tabke losing skis, and Ivan and Klau, unfortunately, unable to compete due to injuries. And here we have the overall ranking currently after three events out of five in the ski men category. And it is Christopher Todell in first, Marcus Eda in second, and injured and luckily not able to compete any further, even Malakov in third currently. Lower Colombaton and Logan Bahoda running out the top five. Jan Rassi's really solid. Berkeley Patterson, even though one of his three results is a crash, he's up there. Craig Murray bouncing himself into the top ten with a second today. Sam Lee also up in there. Connor Pelton, smooth style and consistent in the top ten. Then Griffin Mullen and Rainer Barker raining out the top twelve, which I believe is all the people that would currently qualify for the world. It's actually 13 because we had another rider coming on, onto the board at the very last minute uh, into the season. So we have the top 13 riders they're going to qualify for the third world tour next year trace cook that man at the moment stefan hoisel unfortunately with drew tabke and george rodney really seasoned veterans of former world tour winners not able to put a result on uh, result on today and carl out with injury whoa what a day it has been unbelievable action from all categories History made by the ski women with Ariana Tricomi hitting a 360 in competition. Unbelievable. And then the ski man just yeah, blow, blowing our minds. I'm yeah. still blown away, especially by the last rider, Drew Tapke. Wow. It was incredible. Oh. Such amazing stuff today. <laughs> Thank you guys for everything. We're going to see you in a few days in Fieberbrunn. We've been waiting all week to get this comp done. We might only be waiting a few days to get it done in Fieberbrunn. Coming to the sun. Coming to the sun. <laughs> so, hello, Fever Brun. Wowzer. Finally, the final word from us. It was mind-blowing today. And I'm so looking forward to the next event that's going to be... Incredible. And where? In Fieberbrunn, <laughs> in Austria. It's time for crunch time. Exactly. Thank Adios you guys us. for holding the line with us today. Big ups to Borgia and his family. Thank you for joining us for this mind-blowing show. See you soon.